What's up, YouTube? <laughs> I'm oh, weird the, position for you to start. I was trying to put the lid back on a bottle. I was just thinking, how because it takes like a half a second to put the lid on a bottle, and I thought it'd be fine. So I started 15 seconds to go. I started trying to put the bottle back on, <laughs> the lid back on, and it wouldn't go on. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Spotify. Hello, Apple Podcasts. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm I'm Reef Duck, and with me, as always, is uh, Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website, PrestigeReef.co.uk. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, it's been. Hang on, my screen. It's been two down. weeks. It's been two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time. Yeah, you've been on a holiday, haven't you? Yeah, weird holiday. Went to Iceland though, so it, it was it was not sunny and beaches everywhere and hot. It was dark and freezing cold, like minus eighteen, like Canada. What made you go there? <laughs> because it was actually really cool. It doesn't look. It doesn't seem like the sort of place it would appeal to me, but that's because <laughs> I like you know sunny and hot and beaches. <laughs> So it was it was a it was my wife's fortieth birthday in December, and so this was my present to her. Don't uh, tell for, people that. <laughs> I know, yeah. No, it's the twenty first birthday. It was, um, <laughs> and uh, so this was her. Project that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> and she wanted to she wanted to go, but it was just it's just it was really cool. It's totally different. First thing I should say, the snorkeling was shit. They should be embarrassed. No scuba diving anywhere. I didn't see any you know corals. No, was that no, actually no, snorkeling? Oh, I was going to say, I, I assume you're joking, but, I, but then I was like, mm, was he? No, there are, there are volcanoes and waterfalls. It's cool, really cool place, yeah. but just totally different to any holiday I've ever been on because it's just, there's just snow everywhere, literally everywhere. You can't yeah. move for snow everywhere. Roads are icy. How deep was the snow? Was it like up oh, to your knees? Deep as you like. Uh, so like just when you step out of the hotel, yeah, six inches of snow. But yeah. every, when you, you drive around, like as much snow as you want. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah, cool. I remember, really? I remember that it was like that in America. It was America. like it, for for us who gets hardly any snow ever. Like it was like crazy. Some of the places when, when I went out into like the wilderness, um, in Michigan, it was like it was it was like really really deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was like waist deep in some places. <laughs> huh? mm. So it's quite experience for us who we don't, we don't get a lot of snow here, do we? Uh, normally snows, it snows most years, I'd say, but we don't, it doesn't, it doesn't settle for long. And when it does, yeah, it's yeah. a few inches and yeah. Yeah. But there you go. So that was, uh, yeah, yeah uh, that was, um, that was my week. And what about you? You were, what, what did you do? <laughs> did you just sit uh, like rocking back and forwards and crying on Sunday night? Or... Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I, last Sunday. Yeah. Actually, you know what I did is I booked in consultations. So I oh, booked you consultations said, yeah. in, um, I had, I think I had three of them. Um, just because I needed to fill a void, you know, in me, yeah, I, had yeah, to, yeah. I had to sit here and talk to people, and I was just like, "Alex isn't here, so someone talk uh, to me, please." Well, I almost I was, I was thinking of doing it. It was only when I got because I got back, I landed like um, three hours before the stream started or it was going to start or something. I just thought uh, I'd made a thumbnail. Yeah, so I, well, I was, it, was it was too late by then. I was already fully booked, and I went oh, the place. <laughs> Actually, but, no, to uh, be fair, the, the consultations were booked just before the stream, just in case. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was ready as well. But yeah, I just I was too tired. So, and it sounds like you would probably would have been as well. <laughs> I would have been knackered. <laughs> but you had consultations, so correct. Uh, uh, oh, uh, and oh. you also filmed yourself dancing at the farm. Oh, uh, that is true. I wonder what that was, because obviously that, that didn't come up. I didn't film myself. So well, I will be completely <laughs> honest with you, that, what, that wasn't staged. That, that, don't give me that, don't give me that look. <laughs> it's not unusual for me to be in there, like, with headphones on, um, enjoying myself, because, like, cleaning the glass is well boring. Um, yeah. Les uh, asked on my, on my, um, uh no why are you doing this to me oh, why are you it's doing on your this? instagram <laughs> so i know but <laughs> um it was um so yeah les asked what i was listening to and then he put was it taylor swift and the, ch the chances are it might have been because <laughs> i just have amazon mean? i just have amazon music on so whatever whatever plays plays <laughs> what's your what's is that your taste in music i don't have a taste in music if i'm honest i literally really? don't like I've never had, I've never had an iPhone, uh, not an iPhone. I've never had an iPod or a cassette player or a CD player. Not never in my entire life have I ever, like, chosen to listen to music that's not on the radio. Bloody hell! I just <laughs> this I, is worse than your the movie. Uh, and everyone thinks it's really weird that I have just <laughs> never had any interest in music. Um, as I said, I I will listen to it. But if anyone says to me, "What's your type?" I just go whatever's on the radio. 
And I'll listen to any radio station as well. <laughs> um, I'll lend you a Led Zeppelin album and it will mm, rock. Well, I don't know. But yeah, as I said, there's a lot of Taylor Swift playing at the moment. I think it's, she's very popular at the moment. So uh, about, Something about to do it. with the Super Bowl. Because actually, I think the... the was it the Super Bowl last weekend on the Sunday? Or was yeah, it? I think she's her yeah. boyfriend, some person in it or yeah, something. Yeah, he's a player, I think. I saw, I saw stuff on it. I don't know anything about. I don't know anything about Taylor Swift or. Well, Taylor I know her whole life story, so I'm yeah, just, I'm just, just joking. <laughs> but no, she was. Uh, it was. It was really popular because of. Anyway, this isn't about Taylor Swift. So yeah, but if she's we'll, listening, you know. yeah, actually, that's a good point. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> uh, Taylor, can you give me a million dollars in the super chat? Thanks very much. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you were you were dancing. What else were you doing? <laughs> uh, so I was I was actually cleaning it then. Um, <coughs> I had uh, a interesting week, if I'm honest. Um, so about two weeks ago, there was a uh, well, yeah, it was it was two weeks. There was a power cut that happened at uh, one in the morning. Um, mm. I know it was at one in the morning because I got a notification uh, from the Red Sea, um, like. You know their reef beef reef thing. Yeah, reef, the reef, no, no yeah. it's the the app. The app, yeah. Saying it, it's disconnected, but obviously, my phone's on silent at night, so it's great having these notifications. But if you're asleep in the middle of the night, and that would have been the worst possible time because I go to bed at like midnight usually. So if it happened an hour earlier, I could have dealt with it because it, it it was it's something had tripped on the fuse board. It wasn't like a power cut that lasted hours. I literally just had to flip flip a, a switch, yeah, okay. and I turned it on, and then it's never gone off again. So I don't, I don't even know what caused it. Um, but I know it was for seven hours because, like, I obviously happened at one and then I found it when I woke up. Have you got so, battery backups on your MP40s? Yes. yes. Yeah. So the MP40s have battery backups, but not the um, Vectors, uh, not the Vectras. <coughs> what so, about in your water box? Although it didn't affect your water box because that's on a different circuit. No, the whole house. So the whole house went out. Oh, really? So it didn't really matter that I had notifications on because I, I had to turn the light on and I realized that there was no power in the house. <laughs> so was your water? Do you have battery backups on your water box? The, yeah, again, only on the MP40s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so it's just it's to keep the flow going, basically. Mm -hmm. The temperature dropped, I think, one degree. That shows you how insulated it is in the farm. It literally yeah. like hardly <laughs> dropped at all, um, and there there wasn't any noticeable effect um, that I noticed. Uh, like all the corals seem to be fine. The only thing that did um, happen <coughs> was um, so one system will restart automatically and one system won't restart automatically. So when the power came back on, uh, the vectors don't come on on the, on, the, on the second system. And so the temperature probe was in the water sensing 24 degrees because it dropped it. Mm. But the but the heaters are in are in a different in the sump compartment at the top, which is again separate from the rest of the tank. And when I went to the room, I was like, why does it smell funny in here? And it was and basically it it heated up just that that like <laughs> hundred liters or fifty liters or whatever it is, and it turned into basically a soup. So what I did is I just drained that down, filled up with fresh water, and then turned the power back on. So I essentially just did a water change and everything was fine. You was, did, was, when you say fresh water, you mean fresh <laughs> like salt water. Clean clean yeah. water, yeah. 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 New salt it water. was it was lucky that I <laughs> caught that. But let's put it this way. There was, it was impossible not to catch it because the smell. <laughs> I was looking, at going, why is there something? Something must be not okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I look at all the corals, going, well, they're all fine. Um, and then uh, that was when I realised that it was obviously the heating. Uh, it was where the heaters were. So, um, so yeah, that was that was that that was that was a fun thing to wake up to. Um, and I'm pretty sure that was yeah, that was literally two weeks ago. Because um, it, it was just after the live stream. Right. Okay. Our last life. Yeah, because yeah. this is your fortnight <laughs> in reefing. You're welcome, Julie. By the way, this is your fortnight in reefing. Yeah. So. Yes. So, um, what else? Mm. I don't know. I should have been writing it down. Right. So, um, the water box. <coughs> uh, items have come back because no, uh, black no, no, well. no. Don't say that because that <laughs> hasn't happened. Um, when I can't remember if we, when we last spoke, if I had taken the cardboard off yet. I don't think I had like on the live stream. Um, but so I took the cardboard off, uh, so it's no longer blacked out. And then I left it for a week with no light at all, which I actually quite liked it. I don't know why. I actually, I just quite liked having slightly dimly lit fish. <laughs> they just had I've only, this is that I've only seen this photo for the first time. Cause I was going to say, you posted a photo bragging about, um, how you haven't got any diatoms and it was this photo. I was like, yeah, yeah. That's a fish. Show no, but look in the background. Yeah, exactly. Look in the yeah, background. Well, you you saw it tank. before, didn't you? <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. But show, like, if you're going to be saying, hey, look, I haven't got any diatoms. I didn't brag. I didn't have any diatoms. I was just oh, very kindly brag. explained to all the people that told me I was an idiot. They were wrong. Okay, so this is this is not bragging. I know this is going to be awkward <laughs> no, no, for no, all no, the no, people no. that were telling me the blackout won't work. <laughs> And that's not bragging, okay. No. That's like a 10-page essay on no, look, I just, how clever you are. Well, it, it, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was more important to me that um, to explain to people that is... And I, I think at the end, I said, don't listen to people online, including me, is what I said, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't a brag. It was literally to go, look, I had probably five or 10 different people tell me all different things to do and that I was yeah. wrong, yeah? Yeah. And then I did what I wanted to do anyway because I had faith in my own knowledge and it appears to have worked. It, indeed. And, and that's actually that's a, a really good because you'll get that anywhere you go, whether you're looking for advice on a forum, a Facebook group, YouTube, wherever, you will get 10 people saying 10 different things. Yeah. And you've got to be able to process what people say and actually work out yourself because you know your tank better than anyone else. Yeah. And you've got to be able to work things out yourself. And that's really difficult. But um, but when you know what you're doing, it's it's easier. <laughs> it was just it, it was. Well, I, I remember what I wrote in that post now. So I had people saying to me, "Increase your nutrients," but having no idea what my nutrient levels were. Yeah. I had people saying <laughs> to me, "Put a, pro, a, a UV sterilizer on," having no idea I have a UV sterilizer. <laughs> Do you see yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's increase it was a, your flow despite not knowing what your flow were. Only yeah. one blues despite knowing not knowing what your spectrum was. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it. more about like in an ideal world. I don't know how to say if this is the right thing to say or not. I might get myself in trouble, <laughs> especially oh. considering I'm one of these people. In an ideal world, like the people sh that should be responding to these comments or like or asking for help should be the people that genuinely like really, yeah. really, really know. <laughs> like are uh, now that now, how do you ever know if you really, really, really know if you see what I mean? Um, and what but the what thing is, that those people about. have got nothing to prove, so they they don't try to chime in. Whereas yeah. if you, <clears throat> it's often the case. This is just everything in life, which is always the same for keeping. If yeah. you've got something to prove, if you feel like you you need to, you're more likely to be louder. Especially if you've got like a tiny bit of knowledge and you're like, oh, I know this, I've read it online, <laughs> or I watched so, the, the video. <laughs> so it wasn't meant to come across as a brag, and if it did, then that wasn't my <laughs> intention at all. It might it, literally it was basically a warning for people to go, don't mess with me. <laughs> no, no, no. It was a warning to go to basically say, look, like these were all the things that people said to me and and I didn't do it and it worked anyway. So there's multiple ways of doing it and be careful who you listen to. Yeah. And that was that was all it was. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you just got to filter out the information. Um, and this is this is presumably a natural light. I can see that the lights yes. aren't on. So yes, so I so I have now progressed from that stage. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, um, oh, that's actually probably sellotape. No, that's oh really? No, that it, looks like salt to me. Uh, I mean, it could be, but you just you lazy Instagrammer. My kitchen <laughs> looks clean in that in that reflection, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just realise that. <laughs> I got to make sure I could make sure everything's clean before I. Uh, I should probably start with the tank. Yeah. Um, oh, I, in that, in the bottle, in the background there, I can see a bottle of Red Seas magnesium. So just, so, just so everyone knows, it's not sponsored. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> but um, the I just liked your photo. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, so since then, it's progressed. Uh, where I now have one light on. I have the light on at the very end, um, just okay. because then half the lights off. It doesn't quite spill out you know what i mean if i picked one of the middle ones it would have maximized the the, okay. the amount of light um and the reason i've done that is because i just very slowly seeing how things um adapt to it for the first time i'm actually starting to see the tank like the tanks peck on the on the rocks which is what i'm hoping because i want algae to grow yeah, because yeah. algae will outcompete the other things <laughs> mm. and it's never had any algae in that tank um, and I'm not sure why, because it's had coral in it, which means it, and and plugs and stuff like that. So I could transfer algae over yeah. that way, and it's got nutrients in it high enough to grow algae. So <laughs> I'm I'm not entirely sure why it, it hasn't, but um, either way, I'm doing it slowly. I put some copepods in as well. Oh, cool! Uh, I did that when it was dark still, and I've just. I'm limiting the amount of energy it's getting to see what happens. And today, for the first time, the rock has changed color again. So it's no longer white. 
So what that is at the moment, I don't know. And I probably won't know for a few days. It could be diatoms again. It could be dinoflagellates. It could be algae. Uh, it could like, so I don't know. Okay. Interesting. But it seems to have, it's done the job for now. It's too early to, to say conclusively, you know, come back in three months time, basically. But it looks like it's, it, would, it certainly cleared it. Yeah, it absolutely like wiped it out. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and it did it so quickly. So, and, and the fact that it's done that is also great because it it, it reestablishes balance. It's now yeah. it's now like a, yeah. everything's got a fair shot to 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 succeed. And if they succeed again, I'm just gonna have a diatom tank. <laughs> yeah, diatom dominated tank. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like you deserve it because I've tried to kill you and you're back anyway. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, cool, very good. I That's was trying to find well. a. I was trying to find a before photo that showed the diatoms because they were really bad. Uh, they, but, they, I don't think there ever was a before photo. I think nah. it's in a video, but I don't think there was a, a before. Oh, photo. okay, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, it was really bad though. It was, and that's because a couple of people commented like saying, "Oh, look, diatoms are just part of the natural process." <laughs> but I think I think if you'd have shown a photo of how of the extent of the diatoms, people would have been like. Yeah. All right, yeah, that, that's not normal. <laughs> it's, it's it's like saying that grass is part of a garden, but you know the grass is like three like feet high. Feet tall, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fair enough. And th there's one last thing I want to um to ask you about. Yeah. What's this about? What's this? I went to London Aquarium. <laughs> Coral King. Coral King. <laughs> so, um, you know what it's about already. So why are you asking? <laughs> oh, do I? Oh God. <laughs> I went to London Aquarium. Um, with uh, a lady, a friend, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and I just thought, what did I think? So okay, this is this is the truth. She nicked and named me Coral King when she found out what I did, and then when we saw that sign, and we were like, this is a good photo opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You so, are the Coral King, fact. Yes, but I had a good day. I actually had a really good time in London. Yeah. Which so, is unlike you. You hate it. It is unlike me because I don't have a really good time, you know, going on a train to busy places. No. <laughs> and London is way busy. <laughs> change man, interesting. Um, all righty. Uh, what? So, so, is there anything else you've been up to for your fortnight of leafing? <laughs> Les says you didn't think to put socks on. I am wearing socks in that picture. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I've just got. I've got short. I've got like sports socks on. <laughs> What's even okay. more weird is what, like, my the the way I'm standing in that, my legs look weird in that picture. <laughs> I didn't really notice. Yeah, it's all right. It's not <laughs> worth looking you. at. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, how what what have you got to tell me about your 14 days of reefing? Firstly, I'm assuming everything was fine with your because your dad looks after the tank, doesn't he? Oh, he, he didn't this time actually, but um, because uh, it was only a, it was only four days. Okay. Iceland's bloody expensive. You don't want to go there for more than a few days. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I came back. Everything was fine. Oh, actually, though, Lara, uh, my missus's sister did look after um, after the tank uh, for half the time. She came up on the weekend. Yeah. Um, but everything was generally fine. Uh, three of the four tanks were absolutely perfect. No problems whatsoever. The Cade, though, yeah. <laughs> uh, Midas bloody died. It's weird. Why, like, what, what would make that die? So the only, I mean, so I didn't feed, I didn't feed that tank. I had, um, I had no auto feeders. I didn't set up any auto feeders on any of the tanks Yeah. because I, I figured four days is going to be fine. And the, on the, at the end, uh, Laura's sister was put, was feeding the main tank, but, for, but so it must, I think it must have been that maybe he was already underfed. He didn't look it, but yeah. he just, I got back and I just didn't, I couldn't see him and I've not, I've not seen him since. So he's obviously rotted away in there somehow, <laughs> somewhere. She probably left so, the yeah. lid off at one point, one night. Yeah, he yeah, jumped yeah. out and then like throw <laughs> down the back and you're thinking, oh, I can't <laughs> jump because he's got a lid. I know. Um, but no, the, uh, so, but uh, I, so I always like with these two tanks up here, it's like a bit like the main tank, you can put in as much food as you want and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I don't really care if like, if, if they get overfed, but these two tanks and the little, the reef cast, a little one, yeah. it's easier to, to overfeed them. So I normally just say, I just leave it. Um, but four days is, uh, yeah, that was a shame. Oh, all the other fish were fine. Even though my little corny little pike fish, <laughs> it's fine. But it's weird that sometimes that happens. Like yeah. I actually, I lost, I had a goby for 11 years. That's the other thing I forgot to tell you. I had a goby for 11 years. 11 years for a goby it seems like a long time 
And the other day I, I found that and it just died. And I'm like, did you die of old age or did you die of something else? Because that I don't know how long ago it would be lives for. See, this is the trouble. It's really difficult to work out because I, I lost a, um, a RAS. I've lost a few RAS in the last uh, year or so, but I lost a RAS, I don't know, a year or so ago. And I, I tried, I'd had him for f- uh, about five or six years. Yeah. And I tried to find out life expectancy. And it's so difficult because it varies so much. Like a clownfish will live 30 years. A couple of banded butterfly will live 15 years. Yeah. And then there are small, there are other fish that live much less. But it's just, it varies so massively. So you can't just say, oh, fish live 10 years, for example. So yeah. I could, and the, the RAS is five to seven years seems to be about life expectancy. And with a Midas Blenny, it's more like three to five years. Yeah. But he was, he was still junior. I've had, I had one that was older and bigger than him. He yeah. died of natural causes, I think. But yeah, it's so difficult to work out uh, life expectancy for fish. Some people, like clownfish, you can get told quite easily they can live for 20 or 30 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are loads of fish that you go researching and all you've got is people saying, well, this is what like, anecdotal evidence, basically. Um, yeah. I just wondered, like, what what would have changed the... What, the 11 what years have... feels good for a goby, though, is what I'm saying. Well, let's, let's first say, there, there's not going to be many 11-year-old gobies knocking around, I don't think. Mm. <laughs> so maybe in the ocean, I don't know. Probably less likely in the ocean, if I'm honest. Yeah, but, get eaten. <laughs> um, it was one of those... It was. A, it, I was bought it as a yellow watchman goby, but there is actually a goby. I, I can't tell you the name of it. I only found this out because I, I was just happened to be flicking through a magazine once, you know, back in the day when people used to read magazines. Um, and it, it said, um, <coughs> that, well, congratulations that you can read. Um, <laughs> it said, um, are you, uh, have you got an imposter in your tank? And there's a goby that starts off looking identical to a yellow watchman goby, and then it turns brown. Yes. And that's what I had. And I just thought yeah. it was maybe, a, it was like a, maybe a male or a female or something, but it was a completely different species. <laughs> And I just didn't know what it was. I, to, I mean, to be fair, even now, I don't know what it what it was. It was just a goby, but it I wasn't a yellow that. watchman goby. But that wasn't the one that died. That was that was the one that, that died. It was. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you, you don't even know what it was to look up whether no, it was. Uh, no, it was that. But it makes me realize how old some of my fish are. Like, because I, I go back and look at uh, like through pictures from like Facebook and stuff like that, and posting things, and you're like. Oh my god! Like this was like so long ago, <laughs> and then and and then you realise that you've had that you've had it all that time, and all the tanks has been in all the tri- like it's, it's progressed from it's been for every crash, everything, and yeah. So yeah, that anyway. Sorry, I interrupted your week of reefing, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, so okay. So I'd so say the first I didn't really do anything. First week I didn't have anything. Like if we had done the live stream last week, I wouldn't have had anything to talk about. Um because I didn't do anything. But the tank was most tanks were fine, but the Midas Pony did didn't make it unfortunately. Yeah. But apart from that, the tank was great. Uh, and I yeah you know, I, I said beforehand I was a couple of weeks ago I think I said I was starting to increase my magnesium. And you uh, you were saying uh, 50 parts per million per day is what you think you should increase yeah. it by and I said I'd read like 50 to 100 whatever. Yeah. Um and it ended up going up about 200 parts per million over about six weeks <laughs> in okay. total okay. um so really really slow i found it, it's even because I, I i use the same magnesium crystals you do the magnesium yeah, yeah. Uh, chloride hexahydrate yeah um and i poured loads in so i made it a really intense um solution and it's now up to 1380 as of this morning yeah um so it's back to normal well back to good good levels so but oh actually that was one thing i wasn't gonna i'd forgotten about so I, i'm trying to do the same on my water box which is a little bit low it's 1250 now but yeah. i still want it higher and um i've so i've, I've set up a, an ecotech versa that i've been using for calcwasser for the last year or so uh, and i've set that up to do the magnesium yeah. and it's broke it's broke <laughs> really i think it, i think it's just the it's, it's doing this weird thing when it kind of half turns then gets stuck i think just the the dosing head thing needs replacing so i've ordered a new one yeah um but it's just it's not doing it so i've had to turn it off until that arrives i'm hoping that'll fix it but i don't know if that's a regular thing i've never I've, that's the one ecotech product i think that i've never had i've never had a versa i i love it for calcwasser i think it's fantastic yeah. for that but um for uh, one thing i'd never used it for anything other than calcwasser and then when i went to set up on magnesium which <clears throat> so normally when i set up a dosing pump yeah i set it to dose every hour five milliliters an hour or whatever and you know and that's what that's how so it'll dispense a small amount regularly but with a versa you can't do that 
you can only set it so it continuously doses. So oh. you can set it, you can set the time. So you can say, if you, if you got a hundred milliliters of magnesium, yeah. you can say, I want you to dose that over 24 hours or, or over a 30 minute period, whatever, but you, <clears throat> you can't, you can't set it to dose on the hour, every hour, which is, I just, it's weird. It's, I mean, as I've never used one, but that seems like an odd thing to, to it, not be able to do. It's probably better because it means it's completely silent. Because that if you turn them onto full blast, they're they're noisy. But if yeah. you, if they're if they're on anything below fifty percent, which is loads of capacity, they're really quiet. You can't hear them. Yeah. So it's probably a good thing that it dispenses it really gently throughout the day. But I just I don't. It turns so slowly when it's if you set it for hundred milliliters over the course of twelve hours. The thing turns so slowly you can't see it. You'd have to do a time lapse. Of, of, so I just and I I don't know. I just kind of, I don't like it because I'm not used to it. Yeah. I think it's probably theoretically better than the other way, but it's just different. And I'm like, ah, I don't like it. But um, but for Calcrass, it's been it's been wicked. And I think I think this the replacing the head will fix it because it's still the motor's turning. So it's just the 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 edge bit that's um that's not. Um, we'll dip back into that in a second. Well, you're being told that you can set it up like any other regular doser. Uh, I'm not convinced you can, but I'll take your word for it because I didn't do a big, big digging. Edward, though, first off, a super chat, five bucks. Thank you. Um, I've been dosing calc for a week. No two parts. Alk is 8.3. Cool. Good start. More testing needed, but I mean, cult of calcwasa. Hashtag cult of calcwasa. Nice. Uh, calc is the truth. Is good shiz. Um, and let's talk about uh, where is the Versa? <clears throat> what are you talking about? <laughs> you can set the Versa to dose like a regular doser. I looked into it, I couldn't see how you can do, but uh, I'll take your word for it. I couldn't set it to you can't set it, I couldn't see that you could set a schedule up so it doses every hour. And I looked at um, the Reef Dudes videos, I looked in, I played around with the app, <clears throat> I tried to set up a custom schedule, but anyway. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. There are no facts on this live stream, so it doesn't matter. True. Um, but yeah, so what else uh, What else was uh, my week in meeting? Okay, we've got some more exciting stuff. Uh, so when are you I, telling people the, the proper gossip? It's like, I can't, I can't contain myself anymore. <laughs> I know one of your secrets. I've known it for like three weeks. <laughs> I've started to shut down my tank. There you go. That happened yesterday properly so i um i've been just thinking about it for ages and the, the i've said I, pro, I think i've said before the thing that puts me off doing it is the hassle of shutting I'm not down sure people heard that you were so like nonchalant when you said that <laughs> he's starting to shut down his main display tank <laughs> yeah yeah is, the, what, is how he meant what, is what he meant to say yeah 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 my red sea reef of peninsula 500 yeah you know the nice one with all the sps corals that yeah. one yeah 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 see which Several. tank is being shut down <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's the main <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. So the um, let me show you on Instagram. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you on Ultimate Reef because I took out some corals, uh, today. But yeah, I've started to shut that down. <laughs> Why? Uh, because I want to upgrade basically. So here we go. So this is that's a before photo is the top one, and then after is the middle. So you probably can't see because you know I study this all day, of course. But the two massive colonies are gone. Um, yeah. but I just. The thing is, so I, I do, I, I'm quite impulsive. So I tend, to, I've put it, I've put off doing this for a long time, because the hassle of shutting down a tank is is real. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You, you, I mean, you've done it before with your thousand liter tank. It's just, it's such a pain. And also, when you start, when if I like, if I listed everything for sale all at once, you get a thousand people contacting you. You get uh, Facebook messages, uh, forum messages, texts, everything. I can't keep on top of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing, and that's put me off I, so i'm doing it bit by bit so i listed seven colonies the other uh, on friday i just i suddenly like i said i'm quite impulsive so suddenly i was like this is happening now i'm gonna go and take some photos they were crap photos with my second camera that's not very good i was like i'm, I'm doing it i'm putting seven on i'm gonna get rid of them <clears throat> so i sold uh, a few and i've got loads more to go but yeah i'll be i'll be upgrading but the plan is are you upgrading I'm, the background i am gonna have a black or blue background I'm going one step better than that. Okay. The birds uh, are they going? They're migrating. Oh, you're getting rid of the wallpaper. I am, yeah. So, the, so the I, what I want to do is I, I'm I'm not going to set up the new tank for probably a few months, a little while. I've got no timeline by when. I definitely want to do it, you know, in the summer. I would say, but I've got no fixed timeline. But I'm going to strip down the tank, sell it, uh, sell everything, um, 
potentially. <laughs> maybe not uh, the get... light. Uh, mm, uh, maybe. Anyway, I'll strip. I'll sell all the livestock for sure, um, and then I will. Uh, I'll, I'll get rid of it, redecorate the the living room because the missus has wanted to get rid of that wallpaper for basically since we moved in. <laughs> um, and we've got a couple other things to do in the living room, so we'll get that sorted, and then I'll put the new tank in and, uh, and set it up. <laughs> Are you getting rid of the fish? Yeah, that's what I've been talking about that today. So it's, I don't want to. I don't want to, but I don't, I you can't have no see. no soul if you're getting rid of the fish. <laughs> I would I never get rid of see. my fish. In fact, even fish that are given to me, and after a week I'm like attached to them, I can't get rid of them. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I can't see how I can keep them because th th there's, I've got a couple of potential options. But my problem is, I don't want, this isn't going to be a, a, a job where I have one hectic day where I, sh I shut the tank down, move the new tank into place, and then transfer everything over. And, uh, and and move all the livestock over. That's not happening. Just I don't want that. I want this to. This is a this is a take my time. If it takes six weeks to get the tank wet, that's what it takes. If it takes me three weeks to do to do the cable tidying before I even set the tank up, so be it. You know, this is yeah. I'm taking it slow on this one. So there's no way I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, only slightly more deliberate. <laughs> so there's no way that's happening. So, and I don't want to do that. So I, I can either. But I don't want to lose the fish, to be honest. I've got I, all the fish in that tank. The ones that I've got left <clears throat> are really cool fish, and I've had them for what, a while. What are they? Uh, Whitetail coltang, mystery ras, leopard ras. Uh, oh, three hawkfish. I love those hawkfish. Uh, a rabbit uh, of some kind. Not that many, to be fair. I could probably take them, in all honesty. Really? I, I probably could, yeah. Oh, they'll oh, go okay. somewhere. I mean, you might never get them back, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like the coal tank might be a bit more difficult because obviously I have tangs in every tank. Um, but I reckon I could take I, like the hawkfish will be fine. Yeah, I reckon I could take these. Like I, I wouldn't want you to get rid of them if you want to keep them. If, like, we'll, uh, we look after each other, don't we? Well, in that case, if uh, you heard that, guys, this is happening. This is oh, there case. is. You did also hear like the there's a uh, housing fee as well. Yeah, like yeah. there's a there's a fee attached. So you know yeah. how you said it's going to take. Like months and months and months. Yeah. What else, you know, they got to pay bed and board, haven't they? I think it's going to take two days. <laughs> <In that laughs> yeah, case. all of a sudden it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wicked. Well, in that case, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you. But we'll, yeah, we'll talk about that later. I wouldn't, that'd be cool. I wouldn't want you to get rid of them if, just because, when I've got the space for them. So because it's funny because it, the, the the new tank won't be aquapora dominated like this one is. Yeah. It'll, it'll be. I think I'm going. I can't really make my mind up because I bloody love SPS, <laughs> but I think I want LPS. Just a, a change as much as anything. I've yeah. for, for the last six years. All I've that's uh, I've been obsessed with acros, and I like the idea of a bit of movement. I like the idea of a bit of a change. I like I, I, the one thing that, uh, that I don't like about acros is I'm constantly obsessing about colours, and there's always something wrong with probably half a dozen of the corals in the tank, or maybe even more. Some of them look spectacular, others uh, they go through stages where they look awesome, and then they don't look so good, and then you can't recover it, and then it's like oh, it's just so I'm fed up of <laughs> fussing over acros. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I know, I, I know, I know exactly what you mean because it's like yeah. you can have some of them could be great, but you don't care about the ten great ones. It's like the one not great one is the only one you can focus on. And even so, there's some like I had a a, a Euro corals um, coral Optimus Prime Acro. It yeah. was amazing, and when you see it top down, it looks so good. It looks amazing. Even from you don't have to. It's not one where you have to get a microscope to see all the colours. Yeah. It looks fantastic. But when you look side on through the glass, it looks all right. But nothing yeah, special, yeah. and so I, and whereas I find LPS corals always look awesome, they look even more awesome top down. But just front on, they all look, they always look awesome. Whereas the acros, they look lovely, but they don't, they look like seven out of ten <laughs> front yeah. on, and then ten out of ten. Top. So just a few things I want to change, and I do want to, I do want to switch it. But that has that has started to happen. It's going to take me a while to do it because I've got a lot of corals and and all that yeah. sort of stuff. But I don't, I don't mind losing the corals though. I don't mind that I'm keeping. Uh, a frag of um, each of my nicest acro and I might end up having it was funny I posted on Ultimate Reef I said it's all LPS but I'm going to keep um, some of my my special acros yeah. and then someone was someone commented say I'm giving up drinking except beer and wine on a Tuesday yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and as soon as he said that I was like actually 
that's a good point because am I, all the reasons I'm getting rid of acros, well, I'm yeah. not. So I'm still going to have those same issues. So I do, I, but I'm going to keep them for now anyway, and I'll see how it goes. But, Just get rid of the ones that don't do well and keep the ones that are easy. Well, but this is well. So that was the original plan, but then I've I'm keeping all some nice acros. But and I don't even know if I've seen some really nice mixed reef tanks where there are acros at the top and LPS at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't know if it's going to work to be honest, but I I think I'll probably give it a crack. I've got nothing to lose, um, and a few frags might go brown. That's about it. So you have just as much trouble with your LPS tank though, where you say you you said the other day, oh yeah, there's like ten pieces here that are not doing i'm not you're not happy with yeah. the extension of the goni or whatever yeah, yeah, so yeah. You're, you're gonna have just as much trouble with an lps tank do you know what you need mushroom corals and mushroom. softies <laughs> pulsing xenia um no I, I don't what's that what's that oh is it oh it's this thing oh i need to tell you about that later um yeah uh no i say it's i have different issues though the thing is like with the with the lps corals, like gonies gonies are a pain in the ass anyway so um but the gonies i have that i'm struggling with they just they they've shriveled up and uh, they yeah. they're really not looking good. But when the, with it's kind of, it's quite binary with LPS corals, they're either fantastic or they're half dead. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Whereas SPS, there's like this massive spectrum of like it will it will even some branches of a colony look spectacular and then the other looks a bit dull and there's yeah. just it's it's nothing is ever. So with LPS corals, they're either awesome or they're dead. With SPS, there's like a thousand shades of grey. And trying to get, trying to go through each stage and steadily uh, increase it and make it slightly better. That's the yeah. bit that, uh, to be fair, you get out. I'm gonna have problems with anything, so I'm gonna I'll switch over. And there'll be oh, there'll be things that I like about not having acros, and there'll be things I don't like. <laughs> and what I might do is for the first two years go LPS until I've achieved and made it look the way I want it to, and then after two years pull out the LPS curls and go acros. But I don't know. I got. I, I'm, I'm going to start like, with. You like to change obvious. things all the time. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I'm a lot. I don't sit Because I'm the but opposite I... of you. I'll I'll drop a frag in, forget that I've put it there, and then like <laughs> three months later, it's encrusted on the rock yeah. and it's grown. But that that's what I want. Really, I, I, these these are things I might do. I don't really know, but it's going to be LPS tank. And the the I love the water box so much. It's so awesome. Yeah. That I want that only six times the size. You know, not six times the size, but. You know. Yeah. So um yeah, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm doing with that. Do you know what tank you're going for yet? Jay's asking. Uh no. I'm not definitely not sticking with the Red Sea Reefer. The only thing I don't like about that is that it's so tall. Because yeah. it's a peninsula, they're designed to be quite imposing. So the cabinet is a hundred centimeters high, whereas most cabinets are only 90 centimeters. So that's over three inches taller than normal. And the tank is another 60 centimeters, two feet tall. So yeah. you can never see top down without a step ladder. And yeah, I see I like even... that. Ah, oh, but I even saw that I saw someone with a Red Sea Reef for 425 XL, and yeah. that was way shorter. And I loved it. <laughs> so I, I hate the look of a of a net, even nice nets. I've got some proper fancy I'm nets that came from America. I, I hate the look. If I if I have a tank, I want it to have no net on it, but then then fish jump out. So you have to have a net. So if I have to have a net, I want the tank tall enough so I can't see the net because <laughs> I think it takes away from the look of yeah, the tank. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, that doesn't bother me so much. But the, the, the thing, what I realized the other day was there are so many options now. When I set up my first tank, it was a clear seal reef space. And they, it, the choices were that. There was one by TMC, I can't remember what it's called, that the, the front glass people said it would bow <laughs> after six months. I, yeah, I've, I've, and then, I think I remember those tanks. There, and then there were a couple of Red Sea, like the Red Sea Max ones, where they were yeah. like an all-in-one system. And they weren't very... It wasn't the Red Sea Reefers. They weren't out at that point. So that <coughs> you didn't really have any options. Now, were, oh, you've no, got... Really, they, they were like a bio, bio orb or something. No, no, it wasn't the bio brown... Orb. Yeah, bio, yeah. Yeah. It, which had like a black lid on it. So the, the yeah, light yeah. was in the in the thing. And, oh, that and, yeah, yeah, T5s and... yeah. There was a Kent Marine one that was an all-in-one. They were they were all a bit rubbish. But now there's so many. There's so someone said Neptunian Cube, which is a new company. There's DD Reef Pro. There's Waterbox Red Sea. There's Cade. There's yeah. loads. There's so many options, and it's brilliant because they all do things slightly differently. I think the three most likely candidates are Cade Red Sea, Waterbox. Yeah. And there are things that I like about each of them. Um, 
that I, in an ideal world, I'd be able to say, right, I want that from the Red Sea, that from the Cade, and that from the water box. Because <laughs> yeah. there's no perfect tank for me unless you went custom, which is also an option. So, what, so what but, you can, you can make a new brand of tanks. Just get, take the best things of each of them, combine reef, it. Reef dog tanks. Reef dog tanks. Oh yes. There you go. Um, but yeah, there's there's no there's no there's no perfect tank. Um, but if I went custom, that, that would be the closest thing to perfect. But um, but there, there's things there, there's there's in particular there there's a Cade uh, sorry there's a Red Sea tank that I really like the 850S, which is it's massive. It's got a bra Euro brace. It looks really nice. I think I've seen the one. Yeah, and then there's a water box tank, the Frag, which you don't like because it's quite low. I like the lower ones, and even yeah. the you're gonna have a you'll have a lid on it though, won't you? Yeah. So even if it's low, you're still gonna have to have the lid on it. You don't have a lid on your water box at the moment, do you? Uh, don't tell anyone that. But we no. just don't talk about that because it's not <laughs> <Yeah>. appropriate. <laughs> but I know, I know you'd have a lid on it, so right. it's not gonna give you the same visual look because in th unless you're also not gonna have a lid on the one downstairs. No, I will do. I was thinking about that because I was I was thinking if I could get if you get if I can have a big Euro brace might be able to get away with it but i think probably not because i also I'll, I'll be keeping i've got a goby and i want to keep that goby so yeah, yeah. and they, they they will jump they'll jump as soon as oh, i can't back. guarantee you'll get the goby back <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> oh, i could probably keep him up here Ooh, could, I could i've him. got space for a goby now so you, you never know <laughs> you'll like it but yeah um i don't but basically I, I, I don't have any firm plans i've got a few options of what i like um but I'll firm that in up in the next few weeks. I just want to, I actually quite enjoy looking forward to the idea of that tank being gone. Yeah. I love it. But the idea that it's gone, I don't have to do water changes on it every week. I have to scrape the glass and all that. I can have a bit of living room space back. Quite like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, you, I don't know. You're like, I thought it would be fun setting up another tank. It has not been fun for me so well. far. This but is that's, the, this... that's I think that's because obviously I have so many other things like I have other corals to deal with. Yeah. If you see what I mean, so it's not so much a hobby anymore for me. It's a business, so yeah. I've just added to the business. If you see what I mean, but that that's the only thing I'm thinking is that I've seen I've seen too many tanks lately set up, and the first twelve months have all sorts of problems, including you know the Cade, for example. I've got. Yeah. A bit of site green sino or whatever it is. It's, to be fair, that's not really a, a big issue. But I've seen too many tanks, and like your tank, and I, yeah. I think, do I want that hassle? But I, I so I was, I was thinking about because um, when I set up my Red Sea Reef for Peninsula Five Hundred, my main tank, I didn't get an ugly stage. I did later, like later down the line, I got Dinos and I got Sino, but that was nothing to do with the with the setup. That was way after the first six to twelve months. Yeah. So I didn't have an ugly stage, and I think I will go through the same again because what I'm I'm going to shut down more tanks as well. There's going to oh, be yeah. a, a tank apocalypse. <laughs> um, so what uh, what in particular? I really the water box up here is going. When when the when I've got a new tank downstairs, yeah, I don't need that LPS tank. Yeah. So I'll get rid of that, and so all the contents of this tank will go into the new one, and that will probably be more or less from day one. To be honest, I'll move the entire rock over because it's an established rock. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it'll still be sterile because there won't be um, bacteria in the sand and all that stuff, but it should be all right. And um, but I, I'm looking forward to having fewer tanks. The the best tank I ever set up, I think, was when I did it in the coral farm, because I moved coral over on day one. So literally, I just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just I just got massive colonies of coral from my um, thousand liter tank that there was I put in a bottle of Fritz bacteria and that was it. There was no fish in there, nothing. And I dose nitrate and dose phosphate never had any. As far as I remember, there was ne there was one day of a bacterial bloom yeah. and I put a UV sterilizer on it and that was it. Never yeah. had a problem. I think it's because there was such diversity of bacteria on the corals yeah, yeah. from such an established tank. It just, it was completely fine. I, as far as I remember, and now yeah, I might yeah. be looking back with rose-colored <laughs> yeah. glasses. It might have been terrible. And someone will go, oh, I watched your video yesterday. And you, and you did have trouble. But as far as I remember, I didn't. Well, that, so that's an interesting point because because I sold the corals. I was going to sell one of my, like, well, I've got three islands in my main tank. And I was just going to sell the middle one complete yeah. with everything on it. Loads of corals. It would have been quite expensive. But some guy said, uh, he messaged me on, oh, send me a... Some guy. <laughs> it lives near me some Steve. guy hi, hi steve uh sent me a message on ultimate reef and said um 
or he posted on the thread and asked if um, if he could take it. He's like, look, I'm just setting up my tank. I'm gonna. It's, it's got water in it now. It's going to be ready in a week or something. Yeah. And someone else commented to say, yeah, someone else very experienced was like, don't put aquarius in a brand new sterile tank. It's, you're asking for trouble. And I was thinking about that. I was trying to think, because um, I'm not just going to sell corals to someone just so I can get a few quid. If that's a really bad idea, then yeah. I, I'm not going to do it. And I was thinking, I ended up, I was trying to work out whether I thought it was a terrible idea or just a, a risky bad idea. One. <laughs> and I, I decided it wasn't the worst idea ever. Yeah, because I would potentially do it myself, yeah. but I I decided that it was a risk and quite a high risk with acros in particular, so probably better not to do it. But it wasn't. I I didn't think if especially if like if it was me doing it, so I reasonably experienced now, I would be comfortable that it would be okay. Yeah, maybe not with acros, but I, I'd like and I, I thought about your when you set up your um. Your system. I didn't do it with acros though. It was all like digis. Oh, it, was, it was basically all Montipora. But um, yeah, but the, but you kept you were dosing nitrate and phosphate. Yes, which yeah, was, it was yeah, yeah. yeah, which was which is really good because uh, the, the the issue that I have and I don't like giving uh, new tanks too much light too soon because yeah. I always have problems when I do that. So that's the one thing that I'm compromising is when I set up the new tank because I'll be putting corals in. I, this is the current plan. It might change. I'd potentially be putting corals in after a week, a month, a day, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Then I'll have to have the, the light high enough to keep the corals happy, but not so high that it, everything goes crazy. Yeah. And to be fair, I could put the lights really low for a month. The corals would be fine. Um, but that's that's the that's the, the one thing that's making me think maybe I should leave it a few months. But I don't know. I'll work it out. <laughs> just be just be mentally prepared that you might you may have an entirely different experience this time because <laughs> every tank i've set up yeah. loads of tanks before and this is the one i've had the most trouble with and i don't know why <laughs> yeah 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 this is very true so uh and, and that's that's the other thing is just because i've it's worked for me some things have worked for me before doesn't mean it'll work for me again 100%. there are all sorts of things that you don't know are happening that yeah. happen differently and yeah so yeah very true um jay you've said Roa is a no-go for gonies. Why do you say that? I use uh, um, Roa in my main tank, and I've got a couple of gonies that do very well. You use um, Roa Foss in... Oh, no, no, no. Well, Nice Fuzzy X, same thing, though. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do use it in mine, and I, I have used Roa Foss as well. That's what I'm interested to see what... what no. I'm guessing it'll be a trace element thing, because it pulls I out... I so, yeah. Well, I don't know what it pulls out, but it'll probably put out some stuff. Anyway, tell us um but yeah so that's uh that's that's that that's I, i'll do it we'll, we'll talk about this another time i'll do a proper a thumbnail where it's about the breakdown and all that sort of stuff but i, I want to do it slowly i don't want to because if i advertised every single coral for sale for a start i've probably got 100 corals in that tank yeah it would just be chaos <laughs> i know yeah, yeah. people knocking at my door every five minutes and uh, you know i'll be you know like, that people are now going to try and get ahead of the, of the other people and contact you oh, and go, I know. can oh, i come I over <laughs> yeah i know i know um but and I, I, get, I get that already and uh but that, that's fine. I just I'm going to try to have a controlled stream, like a dam, just letting yeah. a little trickle out. But the the walls might break and it'll just go crazy. But yeah. But also I'm I'm in no rush. I like the idea of, of setting it breaking it down slowly. Oh, that's one thing. So because I I, I lost I, I sold a lot of my coral yesterday by weight. Yeah. One, so one of them was was like it was over a foot long. It's an acro, massive. Yeah. So I lost a lot. So I I took out I I knew that my alkalinity. Uh, and calcium, of course, oh, was going to was going to go up, so I reduced my dosing by thirty percent. Yeah, um, and that was about right. I didn't have a, a. Let me have a look and check in. I did. I've set it on my tester to test every cage keeper to test every two hours, and it it was pretty much flat. It was pretty much stable. It hadn't spiked at all. So I think I'd got it roughly right. I don't really care if it goes up and down a little bit. It's just I don't want it to go up by like one dkh in the space of a day yeah it's creeping up a tiny bit it started the day at uh 7.47 <laughs> it's now 7.48 <laughs> okay so it's basically flat so cool um but yeah and also i wanted to, because the corals were shading so the jacko lantern leptoceris that you're uh you're keen on that was being shaded by um a couple of these acros and now they're gone yeah. It's suddenly getting a lot more light <laughs> So I don't think that's going to wipe out, but it's possible that some of the corals will be like, eh, I'm melting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but and I'll find that that I'll know that quickly. So if that's going to happen, it'll be it'll start they'll start fading quite quite soon. But I don't want to yeah. turn the whole lights down on the whole system 
just for that. I think I think they'll probably be okay. Just, just do it all in one go. So much easier. <laughs> well, this is true. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, but that's happening. So yeah, thanks, Gary. Exciting, Exciting times. Yeah. Um, Reef Talk, what are you going to change uh, from uh, apart, from before, apart from LPS, i.e. equipment dosing, etc.? I've been thinking about Calquasa a lot. So I, I was <clears throat> considering moving away from Calquasa to go to Reef Sediments PH+, Plus, which, I'm, which is what I'm dosing on my Cade, my Cade and my water box. But I don't think I'm going to do that on my, instead of um, Calquasa, I don't think I'm going to do that on my main tank. I think I'm going to stick with Calquasa. Um, as, so Calquasa is going to be the base of my dosing. And I will also dose um, magnesium separately. And probably I'll probably have a separate bottle for calcium as well so I can adjust the dosing. Um, I'll dose, uh, I'm going to pick, uh, pick your brains about the trace elements you, you dose. <laughs> I'll do the same. Um, but that's, so that's dosing. That's probably it. Quite simple. I'm going to try to keep it fairly simple. And equipment, I'm probably going to change. I might keep the lights because yeah. it's going to be expensive to replace them. And they are the refactory ref. ref flare pro blue m's i have about i've got four uh over a four foot tank which is way too many so that could easily go over the six foot tank yeah yeah but i really like the idea of having kessels so i might go for i might go for kessels for lights power heads i'm looking at I, i've got mp40s so i can probably stick with them i might go for tonsies i like some of the, the new tonsies but probably don't need to spend that money yeah. Uh, skimmer oh one thing one thing i realized but, and this is so because youtube generates an income you have to um i have to tot up everything that i earn from uh, youtube for everything i sell basically any any income i generate i have to tot up and declare for taxes and yeah. that includes selling corals so if i sell coral i have to pay tax on it which is like most people don't and yeah. that's really bloody annoying this year so this the financial year ends in uh, six weeks time and i was on course to make a small loss or a small profit no real yeah. issue and then suddenly <laughs> i realized yef yesterday hang on i've sold a load of corals now i'm going to make a huge profit which means i don't know half of that or whatever is going so yeah. if i sell if i sold my corals for a thousand pounds i only get 500 quid and i've got to give 500 quid to rishi sunak and i suddenly realized that the other day and the reason i mentioned that is because that means i've got to spend a load of money on my tank now so what so, you what you want is you want some prestige reef gift cards store the I money for you i don't know if you can expense um gift cards but anyway what i'm gonna i'm, I'm not gonna do that i did think about that but i'm gonna i'm gonna buy um a bubble king skimmer a fancy one i am expensing my trip to london aquarium <laughs> because i went to the aquarium it is fish related and i put a picture on instagram as far as there i'm concerned know. and there i have is. video of the fish which i can use in video it like for for yeah. like background and video footage, yeah. as far as i'm concerned that is business a, that is a tax deductible <laughs> expense <laughs> okay i see i'm quite cautious on that I don't, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you're wrong to do that but i i, I'm not, I need to speak to my account but anyway the, the easiest way to do it is yeah just spend the money <laughs> so i'm going to spend yeah. the money i'm going to buy a bubble king because i just thought sod it i want one i've always wanted one and i can afford it now so doing it nice. um but yeah so equipment so that's so that's i'll have that as a skimmer my row of phosph uh, phosphate reactor i'm sticking with the nice talk is really good yeah R roller mat filter mat i haven't decided it's either going to be red sea or refactory we'll see but i don't know uh but that's about it i don't think i need much more than that and return pump is the one i've got at the moment, which is a refactory one if i didn't have the refactory i'd go check out so there you go James has said he'd love to watch me argue out with the tax man. That is a legitimate. I am legitimately allowed to do that because it, like as I said, I, I'm using. I have footage for the YouTube videos, and mm. I get taxed on the income from the YouTube videos. So even my accountant said if I go, if I went scuba diving, I can do it as well because if I'm filming it, it's part of the YouTube channel. So yeah, my accountant said basically the same sort of thing about yeah. similar things before. It's like if it's going on there, then it is, and the people expense all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I think because there's no there's no hard and fast rule. It's not like you can do this and you can't do that. It's yeah. all very vague. So it just I think it depends on your risk appetite. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I'm whatever. not I'm not too worried about twenty quid of London Aquarium or whatever it's to cost no, the game. Exactly. <coughs> um, and your two honest tax man would never find out about the corals. Yeah, I know, and I'm never going to get audited. But I just I I just I'm the, the thing. So like you can say what you want about lawyers right <laughs> but as and there are some dodgy as hell lawyers don't get me wrong but as a lawyer 
the rules are drilled into you. So for years and years, uh, I'm told to do things by the book. And that's why so I'm quite down the line with that sort of thing, because I, I fear doing things wrong. <laughs> but anyway, enough tax advice from Presty Grief. Um, there's something else I was going to pull up as well. Uh, how is your reef? Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, I was just pulling up some other stuff. How is your reef actually smart tester performing? Are you pleased with the re readings and trusted? So I've not been testing it against the, um, I've probably had it six months now. I've not been testing it against the, um, the, the Hannah checker, but let me pull this up and show you. Uh, so, and I, I, I trust it. I do trust it actually. I don't trust it enough to, there are some of these devices you can get them to test. And then based on that result, they will dose lanthanum chloride or whatever, or dose phosphate. I don't trust it enough to do that. I don't trust any device enough to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I do trust that this is an accurate, more or less an accurate result. Actually, last time I did test it, I think my the HANA said it was 0.10 <clears throat> and the and the smart tester said 0.12 or something like that. But it was within range. That for me, that's accurate enough. I don't know which one's right, but that's fine. Because if you're if you're trying to nail your phosphate down so precisely that it must be 0.02, not 0.03, well, you mean you you that's a mugs game. That's, yeah. the, 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 none, none of our testing equipment is that accurate. But anyway, it's, it's accurate enough for me. It's been actually really good. The first one broke after a couple of weeks after I uploaded the first review. So I'd probably had it a month and it broke. The second one, it had it sent me this weird message a couple of times that said, here we go, I'll show you the, the thing. Uh, so it said, can't clean dropper of reagent two, can't add reagent two, can't add reagent two. It did that for a couple of days and then, and I didn't touch it and it just, it just went back to, to working. I went down to look at it to see what, um, what the problem was, but, uh, it just started working again. So who knows, but you can see the test results are pretty consistent and it's been, <clears throat> it's been helpful because it's, it's showed me, where is it? Yeah. 0.23 is uh, when it started to go back up again. So I changed my Rofos and then it went back down 0 0.17, so it goes back down. So, so far, I actually quite like it. The first one did go wrong, but they replaced it. But apart from that, I do trust it. I don't think it's 100% accurate, but I don't think any of our equipment is. But... Oh, how are you getting on with the um, reef bot? Is that a bad question? Have you not touched it? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I do. I'm... So it's fine. And it, it's, to be fair, it's actually like pretty consistent. Um, but I don't have it testing all the time. I literally obviously turn it on and turn it off to test it, and I'm only testing alkalinity. Now, I already have okay. other things to test alkalinity. The only reason I'm only testing alkalinity is because I haven't bought all the other tests because I haven't got around to it yet. Uh, but, the reagents, yeah. Yeah, I need all the reagents for all the other tests. So I'm, I'm going to get the um, phosphate one next because that's actually the thing I most want automated. Mm. Um, so I, well, I've got really light all of a sudden on my bright, screen. Yeah. I don't know why. I've not done anything. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so that is, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to get a phosphate one. I was thinking, I actually wrote it down just a minute ago to go buy phosphate tests and I'll do that tonight because sometimes I, th I remember things on the stream, write them down, then do them afterwards. Mm, I know. Um, but it's the same with lots of things with me. It's about like actually doing it, but it, yeah, it's fine. So when I use it to test alkalinity, it, it works. But yeah, that, yeah, good. But I'm, um, yeah, phosphate is wicked. Having phosphate tested automatically yeah. is cool. And I will be transferring the smart tester across to my new tank, yeah. which probably is the best. And that's the one thing with this new tank is um, there will be some stuff on it that I get given for free, no doubt. Um, but I'm not going to take, I, I've I decided the equipment that I want and I'm going to get it no matter what. So if I, if I like, if I approach a company and say like Kessels, for example, if I approach yeah. Kessel and say, look, do you want to provide some lights? And they say, no, I'm buying Kessels anyway. Or if, Don't if say I... that. Don't say that. <laughs> say I'm never buying Kessels ever again. Yeah, they're disgusting. Uh, or if Ecotech said, we'll give you a thousand XR, uh, XR30s, I'll be like, no thanks, I want Kessels. So what, no, what, no matter what, the, every all the equipment I have on this tank will be exactly what I want. There's, n yeah. there's I'm not going to have a single thing where I'm like, oh, well, I guess that'll be okay. Everything is going to be exactly what I want. Um, regardless, and, and I, I'll probably end up buying most of it. But... Regardless of how free it is, <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. Like... Yeah. But that's 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 the thing. That's 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 real. Because yeah. it's there. It's easy to say, oh, you know, no, I'll take that because they are good. Yeah. Even if it's like your second choice, and it doesn't matter. Like, say my so for example, my my two top choices for lights would be the refactory ones that I currently have, <clears throat> or the Kessels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hang on, it's gonna pause and cough that it would be those two and are my corals going to be grow much quicker if i have one than the other no 
they're not. <laughs> is the tank going to look more spectacular if I have one than the other? No, it's going to be fine. But um, so I, I don't, I, I don't think that sort of thing. I matters. disagree I still... with, with what you just said. Then I think light does make a massive difference. Like I do, yeah. personally, I don't care. By having seen different types of lighting, it does make a difference. I think. I think that. To the way the tank looks, actually, the second yeah. part of my statement, I yeah, I, I retract. Yeah. <laughs> not not so much about how whether the corals will grow because lots of lights will grow corals at different levels, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, but how like different lights produce different light, <laughs> which this is very. I mean, there you go. That's there you go. You heard it here first. Different lights produce different <laughs> light. Science with Ryan. So I I do notice that your tank looks different to mine. Yeah, when, when I see your tank, uh, it's funny as well because the, it's not just like there. There are the the reef uh, bright strips that I have, for example. They are a mix of four hundred and fifty nanometer and four hundred and seventy nanometer LEDs, yeah. and I the, the the reef factory lights also have four fifty and four seventy, and you can control it so it's just those. I have tried endlessly to to get the uh, the reef factory to to make the tank look the same as the 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 reef brights. I can't do it. It doesn't look so for whatever reason, even though the spectrum on paper is the same, the reef brights look different to the reef factories. Even if you try to tune it the same, I can't get it to look. So even within, even if you set the spectrum the same, I bet it will look different manufacturer to manufacturer. So, okay. So I, but in terms of growth, I don't think it'll make a difference. Growth and health. I don't think it'll make a difference. Do I think you, you think can pick. That you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I do have a problem. I've got several if problems. If you're that, if you care that much, I'm starting to wonder if you have a problem. But it's because I just love that there's a certain look I love with the, the blue pop in the evening. And the best yeah. light to ever do it was the Evergrows for me. That, that with, with full, with two full Evergrows covering the full top of the tank, it made the, the blues in the evening. That, that was the best blues in the evening I've ever had. And I've been chasing that to an extent since, with the exception of actually the AI blades, which are almost as good, if not as good. Why don't you just get the Evergrows again? Because they only the biggest one they do is four foot, and this is a six foot tank. So I'd have to have a four foot one and then a two foot one, and it would look ugly. And the control well, you have is three, you have three two foot ones. Exactly. Oh, I'd, and I'd have to have six two foot ones because the, the spread isn't very good. And the, the control isn't also the control, like the, the control doesn't matter because the, the remote control on the Evergro is terrible. Um, yeah. And it's just really awkward to use. You've got to change every time point individually. But once you've set up, that doesn't matter. But for me, because I need to make videos and I need to take photos, sometimes I need to turn the, lamp, the light onto blue instantly, and I need to turn, or I need to turn it onto white instantly. You can't do that with the Evergrows, so that's a deal breaker, basically. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you can do it with the blades, for example. But anyway, uh, it's yeah. I can't even remember where I was going with that, but um, yeah, the the LED wavelength drop off varies from brand type. Brand and type says Polymate 3D. Yeah, there's there's something. It'll be something like that. <laughs> it's something is different, even when even when on paper it's the same. Yeah. Um, and I like what I like. I've I think I've now worked out what I like, which is what I've got on the the um the Cade Kessel and AI blades. Nice combo. Uh, Ryan, can you ship coal to Northern Ireland? Yes. No, I'm pretty. No. I'm ninety nine percent sure sure legally you still can't. I mean, I might be wrong, cause, but I know I know since Brexit you're not legally allowed to. I think I've placed to Northern Ireland before. You're not meant to. <laughs> Maybe it was it, before Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> You're meant because the the border is between England and Ireland, isn't it? Before to get like the actual like customs border, and that means you have to have CITES permits to transfer coral to to Ireland. But Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Yeah, but that's not where the customs border is, so it doesn't matter. The customs border is Great Britain. The customs, yes, because. I don't know. You must be yeah. so because Great Britain is England, Wales, and Scotland. Yes. The United Kingdom is the United Kingdom of England, Wales, of Great Britain, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Yes. So the border because you can sell to Wales and Scotland. So the border. Yeah, must yeah, be, yeah. Must yeah, you just. Okay. I, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm. See, so I'm now being told that it is legal. I'm 99% sure that it definitely wasn't legal originally, unless something's changed in like the last year then I, I don't know. But it, it definitely, it, you definitely weren't allowed to. And if you look at coral sellers online, most of them have the same thing saying, I cannot ship to Northern Ireland. 
Right, interesting. Now, can you get corals there? Yes. Put them with, you can get okay. put them in with Royal Mail. They'll ship them over. They'll get mm. there within 24 hours. They'll still be fine. But legally, I don't think you're allowed to because the customs border was was between England, like Britain and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I definitely sold to Northern Ireland before. It was like one coral, and it might. Well, have been- I it thought you were a lawyer. I thought you were a no. lawyer with a moral conscience. This is why I'm. This is like you can see. It, I'm worried about that's why. But that it was years ago. I think it was probably before Brexit. Uh, I'll t- yeah. I'll, do you know what? I'll save it for the judge. <laughs> I get asked all the time that question, and trust me, right. I would love to. I would love to be able to ship to Europe as well because I would if I could. Um, yeah. Because people used to. So like, but as soon as Brexit happened, it ruined it. You so, should set up a, an overseas branch of Prestige Reef in continental Europe. I actually would like to. I actually genuinely would like to. Mm. Um, just because it's a bit is a, obviously a massive market. I actually have a friend. The person who built the coral farm lives in Europe. <laughs> so <laughs> He's a Malteser. I have definitely considered it before. And, you know, if I, um, if I were to expand and Prestige Reef was to franchise, then, um, yeah. The government's website says you still need CITES personal online. Yeah, see? There you go. Yeah. This includes uh, if you move CITES specimens between Great Britain, England, Scotland, and Wales, and the EU, and Great Britain and Northern Ireland. <laughs> Brooke Smith nails it. Do you know, do you know what I love? What I've just realised. <laughs> so what we had someone a minute ago saying it was legal, and I disagreed with it. And then someone went, it is legal. No, it is illegal. And I went, and so I agree with it. And I went, there you go. So it's fine. So... Just because someone agreed with me, it was the it was the same number of people. If you see what I mean, yeah, and I don't yeah. know the background of either of those people. Look yeah. up wins yeah, the framework regarding shipping to Northern Ireland. Signature, see, signature frag should know. Mm. So, like, I don't know what the Windsor framework says, but if if I can, let me know because I'm i like I said I'm happy to do it, but I'm pretty sure I can't. All yeah, right. oh. see, he does. Yeah, see, signature frag doesn't ship to Northern Ireland. I bet he don't. Oh, okay. There you go. So yeah, that's the answer. And that yeah, it sounds like no one does. <laughs> Just use special delivery. They won't find out. It's not about whether we get caught. <laughs> especially as the, especially as the boxes say live animals on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be fair, technically nothing's illegal if you get caught. If you don't get caught, so you know. That is technically true, and you did hear that from a lawyer. Everyone. It's not so. actually technically true, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> One last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, this bad boy. Yeah, well, I've been wondering what that is. <laughs> Hang on, let me see if I can turn on the light. Boo! Uh, this is an Anchor 521 power bank, uh, which is, is a basically oh. a battery backup, but yeah. there's a but. So um, the, I bought that because I've been waiting for it. It's, I've, it's been on my shopping list on Amazon for months on end, yeah. and it was about 250 quid, 220 quid. Can't remember, it's quite a lot. And it went down to 190 a couple of months ago. And I was like, oh, should I buy it? Should I buy it? And then finally it went down to 160 last week. Yeah. So I bought yeah. it. Or the week Plus you had the money to spend. You, you don't want to make a profit. I didn't know at that point. Oh. <laughs> 160 quid. So I bought it. And the, so and my plan with that is that because I don't have MP40s on or any Ecotech equipment on any of these tanks up here. So I yeah. need some kind of battery backup system in case there's a, a power cut. And now I've got that. The problem with it is, no, I'm not planning to have that as, <coughs> excuse me, in all, <clears throat> what's wrong with me? Hang on, let's go cough. I'm not planning on having that as like a, a proper battery backup that kicks in automatically um, because I don't think you can do that with 24 volt pumps, which is what yeah. all of my pumps are. I think it works with 12 volt pumps, but I, I need to get Telegram. Telegram, uh, are we going to get them on at some point? I might just have a separate stream where we just talk about battery backups for half an hour or something because um, I don't really understand it. But basically, a separate stream, do you mean without me? Because <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure I, I'm not sure I can pay. handle, I'm not <laughs> sure I can handle a battery backup stream. We'll do it on like a Saturday afternoon or something or a Saturday night. I don't know, whatever. Whenever basically whenever Jim's free, I'll do a stream where we just have we just me and him, we just talk about batteries for half an hour or something. Anyway, yeah. um, I think that so I have, for example, I have a 12 volt pump, a return pump, but all of the all of the pumps on all of these on both of these tanks are 24 volt. And I yeah. think I'm right in saying that this won't work with those. I should just plug them in and try, to be fair. But theoretically, this can function as a an uninterruptible power supply, UPS. So if you had a 12 volt pump, it can be. So you plug this into the wall, you plug your pump into that, and then yeah. if um, if if you get a power cut, that will kick in instantly. Uh, 
and it should last a lot longer than the Ecotech one, although the Ecotech one lasts way long enough. That's what I was going to ask you about. So in, 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 in the States, sometimes they get power cuts that will last for like five years. <laughs> yeah. And in the UK, our power cuts tend to be, if we get them, which is rare, they Don't tend to be... Don't even say it. Don't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to be 30 seconds or five yeah. minutes, you know. Um, obviously, hyperbole all over the place. But yeah, so how long was your... Oh, you, you it just something tripped. It wasn't a power cut at your place. Yeah, it, it was tripped. saying tripped. Was, yeah, 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 I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. say it was, it was definitely... It was seven hours it was out. But yeah, um, it, yeah it was saying tripped. I, I don't know what caused it. Because that's the one thing. with So these these are potentially good in, in the States um, because they'll last much longer. <laughs> You you unmuted them before you go. Yeah. In the in the UK, it, the Ecotech battery backups will last for plenty. There's no way you're going to yeah. have a power power out, uh, output power outage that's yeah. going to outlast an Ecotech battery backup. But anyway, that is up here now. So if I do have a power cut and I'm at home, I can plug in a pump and be like, "Hey, oxygen." <laughs> so there you go. That's it. 160 quid, Amazon. But I'll, if 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 that does turn out to be uh, uh, that you it can work on any power head, including a 24 volt power head, then that is a game changer. So I'll hold my, I'll reserve judgment. But if it does, I'll make a separate video on it. Yeah. Because it'd be cool. 160 quid. Anyway. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is um, actually links into the, the membership stuff. So uh, I'm going to go to member questions now. And actually, I posted and asked for member questions, but I also asked. Um, instead of just asking questions, I said, when were you at your happiest point in reef keeping? So this is the point of the live stream. If you just clicked on it for just this one bit, thanks for uh, sitting through an hour and 11 minutes. Um, but this, I, I thought about this because I was watching, there's a, um, a journalist in uh, mixed martial arts called uh, Ariel Helwani. And he's just, he's just, <clears throat> I just quite like him. He's interesting. Um, and he, the other day, he's, someone asked him if you could only ever, he interviews people all the time. And someone asked him, if you could only ever ask one question for the rest of your life, what would it be? <clears throat> and if, if the first thing he said was, well, I wouldn't be a journalist. You know, there'd be no point. I'd hate that. They're, they're, you know, it's stupid. But <laughs> one of my, but he said, well, I'll, instead I'll do is tell you one of my favorite questions. And one of his favorite questions is to ask fighters, basically, at what point in your life were you the happiest in your fighting career? And he says he gets that gets really interesting answers. And that's why uh, that was the point of this. So the, the title is, when were you happiest in reef keeping? Because, and there's lots of people asking lately, like I saw, I think there was something on reef builders about is reef, is reef keeping stressful or is people, or, or, or is it relaxing? People ask that yeah. all the time as well. And it's like, actually, yeah. Cause so, and I tried, but instead I just thought, well, what, uh, what was the point at which you were, you were happiest? So I'm going to come back to you in a sec. Because I know you won't have, uh, have thought about it. <laughs> no, I actually, yeah, I actually could, I could instantly tell you the answer. I knew immediately. You can come back to me in a minute. Okay, we'll come back to you. Yeah. But the, the, I'll, I'll read out what the, uh, what the uh, Reef Talk members had to say. Uh, JJS said, probably just getting back into the hobby uh, the past year or so is the happiest, most excited I've been. <coughs> Excuse me. My tank was a 150 gallon that almost split open in my second floor apartment. Ooh. Um, that was back in 2014, and it really put me off having a tank. Finally bought a new one last year, and the only regret I have is not doing it sooner and, of course, not going bigger. <laughs> so that was um, uh, setting. got back into the hobby in the last year, so set up a tank in the last year. Second one was from Lysia Reese, who says, seeing the first bit of notable, noticeable growth on my first SPS made me want to cry with happiness after being told I shouldn't go for hard corals and stick to softies because SPS are too difficult. Year later, any new growth on all my corals I see fills me with the same uh, little bit of happiness I got from first seeing it. Third one, Rich's Reef. Oh, this was a nice one, actually. My three-year-old son pointing at a trackie in my tank and asking me what it was. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, can, I can, can see one. I can what see I that. want... Rich, for uh, next week is for him to to point at a tracky and tell you what it is. So <laughs> yeah, if we can train him on that, that would be great. That's the next level. But I like that. Um, and then the last one was from Gozag408, who says, uh, getting my tank through a lengthy, ugly phase and starting to look uh, like something I'm proud of. <clears throat> uh, and Slaz replied to that saying, uh, going through that now, I only had the first tank of the tank of uh, three months. So uh, this was a bit of a varied one on the Facebook group. I asked the same question as well. And people, a lot of people were saying it's the setup phase. And that was kind of when I think for me, when I was setting up 
<laughs> I had two two times, I think, when I was setting up my Peninsula 500. Yeah. It was awesome because it was like this was going to be. I I I had a bit of knowledge and it was going to be perfect, <laughs> which obviously didn't turn out that way. Yeah. But that that was wicked and it was really exciting. But also when I uh, eventually when I got past Dino Flagellants because that that was Dino's. It, I had Dino's for months in that tank, and it was getting to the point where it was like, oh, what's the point of this? And so getting past that that was more relief than anything. Yeah. But you said you had a you had a particular point that uh, that was your happiest moment. It wasn't I wouldn't say it was a point. It's more of a couple of years, if I'm honest. Okay. Um, and it was I'll be honest with you. It was the Miss Saltwater Tank years. It was when uh, the tank had been like, it it was so it was my thousand liter tank. It it had been it was it was established. I would moved into the into some of the beginner. SP, I had a few acros, but mo like most of the beginner SPS corals at the time, but. For the first time, I was sharing it with other people. Mm. This our hobby is was is very like isolating. Mm. When like it probably doesn't feel like that for us anymore because obviously like we now know people that mm. are in the hobby. But when I didn't know anyone in the hobby before, so all of a sudden I had people that were interested in what I was doing. Well, mm. I mean what what uh, I was doing, mm. <laughs> but. It was just, it was really nice to share and teach. And um, I don't know. I just like, I look back and I go, those were my happiest like time with my tank, if you see what yeah. I mean. Um, and you would, you might think I'd have that from the farm, but I don't. I just don't. The mm -hmm. farm is a business, it's not a hobby. So, and, and trust me, it's, it's very different when you have to sell enough coral to pay your mortgage if you see what i mean it doesn't feel like mm. it's not it's not a laugh anymore it's like a serious thing because if you don't sell enough coral you don't pay your mortgage <laughs> yeah so that whereas before and the other thing was like like <clears throat> that was also when like people were just starting to use um youtubers for uh, influencers and we, we would get some stuff was sent to to us and it was just like, and you also earn a little bit of money from YouTube. So it was like guilt-free spending. Yeah, You'd be like, yeah. I, I'm going to go buy this like thing, which I would never normally buy, but it doesn't matter because it felt like it was free <laughs> money because it came from YouTube, yeah, even yeah. though it wasn't free because you had to you had to make the videos. You, you loved making <laughs> yeah, them, if you see yeah. what I mean at first. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I mean, in terms of YouTube, I've got, uh, there, was a, there was a time when I've been going, I think I've been doing it for about six months or something. And then suddenly, I kept, it was when I made those videos that were like um, five fish you'll regret and seven fish you should buy instead or whatever. Yeah. And they went crazy. Like I was, the, the channel was doing okay, to be fair, for a very small channel, but nothing yeah. special. And then the, the two or three or four videos just went mental. Yeah. And it was, that was so satisfying. Like it wasn't just like twice as good as the last video. It was like a hundred times better than any. And yeah. I've almost, I've almost never, hit those heights that again happens, yeah <laughs> you get once or twice but you get a dopamine hit from doing it at first yeah, yeah. but that and it's it has a diminished return so it's like you get you put a video it does well you get dopamine you put another video it doesn't do as well as the last one or it does the same as the last one you don't get that dopamine anymore mm. so and that's why uh, over a period of time you'll see lots and lots of youtubers don't like don't do it as much anymore including mm. to some extent myself although i do i obviously do like these every week with you so i'm still doing my my bit if you see what i mean yeah like if i if i didn't do this i i, I feel like i would miss making videos yeah like, okay because but i'm i get to interact with you and the people in the comments and stuff like that so the, I, i've been thinking about the videos I've, because for the last year or so my channel and this is largely across the board um it's not just limited to me but for the last year or so my channel hasn't really done that well certainly not compared to how it's done in the past yeah. and like and i i haven't had any i haven't had a video hit 100,000 views for a long time yeah and to be fair 100,000 views in our hobby is good going so that's not likely to happen all the time but there's been a long time and but the and i've been looking back at the videos i'm making and i'm like how many of those were i was i really excited about and the and the one that i was that, that's changed that was friday's video which obviously you'll have seen ryan oh of course i watched it twice what was it reef dog no ryan Something <laughs> today. it was top five reasons lps corals die and the reason oh I yeah that one. Oh yeah 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 that one that was a good one 
But the reason I so I enjoyed making that because I'd been thinking about it for a while. I really I made, enjoyed number two, actually. What was number two? This, this is my favorite one. I just remember <laughs> it's my favorite one. But the, like I enjoyed making it because it was like actually these are there's this isn't just generic advice of like the top five fish like oh number one is clownfish number two is a yellow tang or whatever. So this was yeah. this was things that I think that I this is stuff that I've experienced and not just like theoretical uh, things that that are, are backed up by science. Or whatever. This is just this is all my experience and this is what I've seen and exactly what I've seen causing problems with that. I really enjoyed making that and uh, the feedback was really good as well and there was one thing and i actually took what i found as well is uh, recently i've not noticed i've do, i've been doing it but like if i need a 10 second clip of a coral or whatever i'm just yeah. like 10 to go go done get it done as soon as possible don't really put any thought into it just as long as it, it shows what i want it to show and this time around i put a bit more thought into um the video the footage and all the clips that i was getting and all that sort of stuff and i was a bit more pleased with it a bit more proud of it almost um, and that, that made me feel better than just churning out a video every fortnight for the yeah. sake. It makes a massive difference if you're proud of what you made, like it's a huge it. difference. I, I that, have that as well. Yeah. And it's not like it, the, 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 like the reef casa setup was, which was the last four videos I did. I, mean, I enjoyed that, yeah. but it wasn't like, but it was, it was still like, it wasn't like it's, it was different. And this is really, this was, I really enjoyed this. I'm going to try to do more sort of stuff like that. And I have had a few people say in the past, that that kind of content, coral care video, is yeah. that is their favourite um, content. Um, so I like the idea of doing more of that, but it's hard because the, the the ideas like that, and that will that video got ten thousand views in the first forty eight hours, which is way more than my videos have been doing recently. Um, yeah. But that sort of video idea, there's, I've got a hundred ideas, but they're not all like that. <laughs> so, but um, but yeah, so your your happiest time was. How long ago was that? Five years ago? Might have been seven years ago now. Seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, might have been. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> and I, as I said, it it wasn't I it was just it was a lot of fun. It really was a lot of fun at first, mm -hmm. like making like making the videos mm -hmm. and stuff. So I, I look back um fondly, if you see what I mean, it, at that time. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, so yeah. Because my uh, one the thing that's got me thinking about it was that my happiest time is not at the moment. <laughs> like, yeah. this, isn't, this isn't peak happy, and that's not to say like I'm down or whatever. You know, I still like my tank. I still enjoy the hobby or that sort of stuff. But it's it's not be with most things. It gets better and better and better and better and better. And with reef keeping, it's always interesting. There's always new challenges. You're learning things all the time, endlessly. Yeah. But I don't think I think my happy I'm I, I think my happiness has peaked and I don't think I'm ever going to get back to that same level. That doesn't mean if if I didn't enjoy it, I'd stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think I'm gonna get to that level. How but depressing. I don't think <laughs> no, sorry, I don't mean to be too too down on this, but I don't think I'm ever gonna be back at the the level of how much I loved it. Maybe with a new tank I will, but I think there's a there's a naive innocence um that that is the the because the more you know. The more you realize you don't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't know if it's like when I've been really happy in the past, it's because I'm too stupid to realize what. <laughs> yeah. Whereas now I know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get Dinos and Sino, and <laughs> you probably, yeah, there, there were probably things that you didn't know, and you, and something died, and you just went, oh well, these just happen sometimes, and then whereas now you're like, what you did that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, I just, uh, I yeah, it was, it was. It's interesting because both of us feel the same that now is not our happiest time in yeah. like what yeah. we do. Yeah, interesting. I also, but also now is not your happiest time at what you do with YouTube either. So I wonder if there is a, a correlation with with that where they they sort of go together because it is just as much as it's like a job for me. It's like a job for you. Having a YouTube channel is a job, basically. Yeah, it is, so yeah. <laughs> it's. I wonder if that is why you feel less um, enjoyment from it. Because I've been on the YouTube merry-go-round for six yeah. years or whatever it has been. Yeah. Yeah. So. But um, but I still. I, that's the thing. It, like it's. I still enjoy it. <laughs> and if I didn't, I'd stop. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So no one, no one's happy with reef keeping anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. No. Okay. Um, well, that's I, it for the day. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Bye guys. Uh, Alex, are you expecting beginner problems? N not, I definitely wouldn't say I'm expecting beginner problems as in schoolboy errors. Oh, someone commented the other day saying, um, it was an American saying that they, uh, they lived, he lives in Texas and now he, he's seen my videos. Now he, he go, walks around talking about schoolboy errors. 
Apparently that's not a thing in America. Schoolboy, anyway. Um, no, I'm not expecting beginner problems in that I'm not expecting to do stupid things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think um but I, i'll have um new tank issues for sure yeah um because you can't control it it's not like uh, it's not even like making a cake um so yeah i'll have i'm expecting issues but i'm going to try and this is part of like one of the reasons i want to shut down i so i currently have four tanks that's too much i'm definitely going to have three at the most possibly i'll end up with two i think do i i genuinely believe this What's that? One tank yeah, is, is when you're happy. <laughs> yeah. You're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One tank. That's like so everyone thinks they want more than one. I spent hours today testing the water on three tanks. Yeah. Hours. Yeah. Because that's how long it takes. <laughs> and it's yeah. just, it's no fun. The only reason I really want the Cade, or the no, not the only reason, the main reason is because it's a good backdrop for the YouTube studio, for the YouTube videos. Because if it weren't for that, I'd shut that down as well. I've got no yeah. sentimental attachment to it. But I want to go down to two tanks, yeah. and I think it'll be that'll be easier then. Because even like even if I like if I don't do a water change on a weekend on one of these tanks up here, it stresses me out. It's like there's like someone sitting in my head going, "You haven't done a water change. You haven't done a water change. You haven't done a water. You, haven't, yeah, you need to clean the sand, Alex." And it's like. Oh. So even if you're just even if you're not doing work on it all the time, it's still like it stresses you out. But I want to go down to two tanks. Uh, two. T I, I trouble is I like the reef casa, so I don't really want to shut that down. But I think I probably should do, and, it and that doesn't take any effort at all. Is, have you even got it. the fish in it yet? Yeah, yeah. There's. Yeah, oh, there's I, I know that because I watched your video. So <laughs> there's a file fish and a yellow crown goby, and they're doing great. The tank's doing really well. No yeah. algae, no ugly stage. Everything's good. Although I got, I bought a clove polyp on. I ordered it. Um, someone posted it to me, yeah. and it's it looked it looked a bit ropey when it arrived because it had been shipped and it's not really recovered. Yeah. So I might end up chucking that. But apart from that, and that I think that's just shipping stress. Apart from that, everything's really good. The tank's fine. I've got when the lights are off and the, like the the room light is on, you can see a smattering of green algae on the rocks. Okay. so i might this might be a time to buy an urchin i'm meant to do it this weekend actually so i might buy it but apart from that it's doing fine i'm not touching it. i've not done water changes i couldn't tell you what the parameters are i don't care <laughs> <laughs> so you're enjoying the tank <laughs> the tank you're enjoying is the one you don't look after basically exactly. what you're yeah and that's in my uh, my utility room so i don't ever see it yeah well, I, well I, I see it a couple of times a day walking past for three is seconds. the glass clean <laughs> yeah 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 it is yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did your voice go so high when I asked that question? I yeah, know. I promise. Clean enough. Weirdly, I find with like my main tank, I have to clean the algae twice a week. Yeah. That tank is quite new, so and I don't feel that much. So maybe that's why it doesn't need to be cleaned that much. But the water box, I could go three weeks without cleaning it, and you'd have to look close to see the algae on the glass. Yeah. There's something weird about. I don't know what it is. There's something weird about that tank because the parameters are. They're not it's not like I don't have phosphate in there or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know what it is about that tank, but I, I can go weeks without cleaning it. And it's not like like if you go weeks on my main tank without cleaning it, it's filthy. Yeah, yeah. With that, it, you know, it looks fine. It's weird. There's something going on with that. That it used to be like that. It's not like it anymore, but it used to be like that in the coral farm. The SPS tank you'd have to clean twice a week, and yeah. the LPS tank, you like if you didn't clean it for two weeks, it would still be fine. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know why they, that was actually like what I enjoyed about having the water box with no light, with only ambient light. There's no <laughs> cleaning that needs yeah, to be okay. done. Like the glass just doesn't get dirty at all. <laughs> Someone needs to invent a film that repels algae that you can put on your glass and doesn't block anything. Cause that would be amazing. But yeah, yeah. I don't feel well. I don't think a film would work. You might be able to have some sort of special UV light that goes through or something that, that shoots Ooh. down the side. There was a video, there's a channel that you won't have heard of called Veritasium. Oh, I love YouTube. Veritasium. Do you actually? Or are you actually, I, I actually do know what Veritasium is. <laughs> I've seen some videos. but He's brilliant. It's a, it's a science channel, but he's really entertaining. He's, he's, he's fantastic. He's a really likable guy as well. Um, he's got millions of subscribers. Loads of people in the chat would have seen, I'm sure. And he made a video uh, recently about uh, uh, the blue LED <laughs> and the, the invention of it and why it was so difficult and all this. And it, right at the end, he said he talked about UV LEDs yeah. and how they're slowly becoming more of a thing. They've been around for a little while, but they're slowly becoming more of a thing. And it was in terms of sterilization because it was, it was like, would this have stopped COVID if we had UV LEDs? Or that? Um, and 
and it may it so it is that will suck that at some point that will trickle into our hobby and we'll have uv sterilization by led and put, uh, i don't know if this would actually work but there are all sorts of complexities with it but you could have led uv leds in your in your in your lights theoretically yeah that will do the Blind same as you, you when you look yeah. at them <laughs> <laughs> give your skin cancer but we'll yeah. do the same as a uv sterilizer but yeah. That's yeah. It was just an interesting video. It wasn't. It wasn't anything to do with the hobby. It was just blue like blue LEDs generally. But it was just in. And if you, it's, it was interesting to to learn the process and how they uh, how a blue LED puts out white light and all this sort of stuff. But it's worth watching. Very sounds very interesting. Derek, that's the one. Derek is a weird name, especially for an American. That feels like a an eighty year old Englishman to me. But yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, the one th I, I hang on a second. Change real. You just offended all the Derricks that listen. Derek. There's got to be at least yeah. one Derek that listens. Sorry, sorry, sorry Deza. Um, I get the only. I get the one tank thing. I couldn't cope with more than one sounds of stress. That's the thing. I think actually, it, it's it's not. Oh, we've did, did a whole live stream on that. I, I think it would be. I feel like the fewer tanks I have, the better. Uh, you know, with a and maybe you're right. One is the the key, the sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, I. I... I, I wondered if so if I expanded the coral file, I, like, I would definitely not have one system. I I would potentially have three systems, but I wouldn't have a tank in the house if I had that. <laughs> yeah, that would be too much. <laughs> um, just because then you could have one for specifically for like each each of the main categories. Yeah. Um, but I would have much I would have much longer tanks, I think, because if you have long tanks, why are you smiling? Because you love long tanks. <laughs> so if you have if you have really really long tanks, you own, like one fish. So if you have you have the same length, and I have seven copper bands in seven tanks. Uh, okay. If I had two systems and the tanks were much longer, you only need one copper band in each tank. If you see what I mean. So that that that's my that's my theory anyway. So mm -hmm. that's why that's what I would do if I restarted the farm. I'd have much much. I'd have a bigger building and much longer tanks. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad idea. Um, and this guy Derek is is he's an Aussie, by the way. A few people have said he, he's an Aussie. Doesn't sound Australian. He must have lived in America for a while. Um, and Derek sounds more like a Scottish name. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. I, I don't I have nothing against the name Derek. No Derek's under fifty. Imagine having a baby called Derek. This is this is this is my two month old baby Derek. Gary is another one. Like Gary. Gary is. I remember on on the radio once they were saying that the that the name is becoming like endangered because there's just no new Gary's. <laughs> you can't have a Gary, can you? Bold Gary. Um anyway. Uh we've got to move on because we're running out of time. But you uh we've got Prestige Reef Fish of the Week. And I know you have a fish <laughs> of the week. I just don't know if you have a coral of the week. Well the coral of the week I'm gonna combine with what we're gonna show for the um you know the two corals I showed you before. Oh yeah cool okay yeah, so we're just gonna combine them just to make it easy. Um so fish of the week I'm going for this week is a cowfish. Uh, because cowfish are bloody awesome. Huh. They are they're one of the most unusual fish. They are, as far as I'm concerned, they are about as close to a, almost as cool as a boxfish. I prefer boxfish over cowfish. Me too. Um the reason I picked it was because there was one at London Aquarium and I was like, oh yeah, oh, okay. I remember these. They're cool. Um and, was it, so uh, the, the only thing I don't like about cowfish is sometimes they get a bit brown and boring. So it was the was the London Aquarium one? It was it was one of the brown boring ones. Yeah, it was a big yeah. one. Yeah, is that because it, do they do go that color when they get older? I think it's the I think I think yeah. it's an age thing, but I, I I'm not certain if I'm honest. Like that. Oh, that's quite a cheesy. Anyway, whatever. But yeah, they're cool. They're they're similar. They have similar care requirements to boxfish. Uh, sometimes they don't eat. They are prone to parasites. Both these and boxfish are prone to parasites. You'll right, often okay. if you're going to buy one, look at their fins and. Uh, in the shop, it's they're they're very very likely to be covered in in little white dots, <laughs> which is okay. it obviously a white spot. Yeah. So, okay. Oh yes, there's a Derek in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, Derek's re I'm not offended. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> so <laughs> I like the idea that Derek was like he probably wasn't signed in. He's like, right, I need to sign in <laughs> yeah, I just, so I, just so I can comment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so cowfish. I had one before. Um, one of my customers has got one, um, and they are awesome, but they do get massive. And they also yeah. will eat coral. And I think his one bit him the other day. Oh, really? They got okay. like a little beak. Yeah, Jamie's one bit him. Oh, so, nasty. Um, they get like over a foot long, don't they? Yeah, they get massive. Yeah, yeah. So yeah they're, they're not for everyone. Boys. Um, is it a, is it a, a myth that they if it dies, it will nuke your tank? Are they venomous or poisonous or whatever? Um. <laughs> 
so they do i believe they they have the ability to secrete a toxin if stressed the same as boxfish do <laughs> however i have had boxfish die in my tank never found the body never killed anything so <laughs> i believe that it is something which is a um, they have the ability to, but it's theoretically, is, yeah, is theoretically yes, but I, I think that is unlikely to happen. According to Wikipedia, if severely stressed, this species may uh, be able to exude deadly toxin, pahutoxin, or ichthytoxin, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it, it is apparently unique among fish poisons. It is toxic to the box, box fish. Oh, interesting. And mimics sea cucumber toxins. So yes, theoretically so possible, but... It kills. Let's put it this way: I have yet to have a single person. I put a video out on specifically on boxfish, yeah. Um, and as far as I know, this was and that video has had like forty thousand views or something. So it's like a wide spectrum of people. <laughs> I don't remember a single person going, "Yeah, yeah, it, it killed, it killed everything in my tank." But everyone goes, "Oh my god, if you get one of those, it's going to kill everything." <laughs> <laughs> so it could depend on how it dies. Um, the thing that unfortunately killed my boxfish, I had a prototype. Um, from a company i put um, it in the tank yeah. uh the box fish was still alive it was literally stuck to the the power head uh so i th i mean as far as i'm concerned that's about as stressful as you can get yeah, like being way, stuck yeah. to a power head uh, and still being alive and it still didn't kill everything it still didn't release anything if you see what i mean oh okay yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. so ha like i don't know is the honest answer Max Rockstro, Rock Rackstraw says they are they rarely excrete toxin. I've never had it happen. Either. Yeah. So I I don't know anyone who's ever had it happen, but it's the first thing that everyone tells you about boxfish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um all right, and uh coral of the week is corals of the week. Yes. You need to explain the story. <laughs> <laughs> so, one sec, one sec. I will so, fill the throwing cuffs. There we go. I have a few customers i think about three um it's, it's actually relatively common uh in the in the reefing industry uh, like community to be partially colorblind um or some pe people people are colorblind to a different degree you obviously no, have it yourself. apparently i shut up i don't i'm not <laughs> colorblind you can't keep saying that <laughs> um <laughs> so that's the one thing i i can say anything to you but if i, I say you're colorblind it triggers you for some reason yeah. um but because so, it's because people believe it. I know that, that's just, what makes it good. Quickly, <laughs> quickly interject. Color blindness is more common than you might think. One in twelve men are colorblind. Yeah. One in yeah. two hundred women are colorblind. How weird. It, yeah, it's, it's definitely more heavily related to men. And mm. there's different types of color blindness as well. So your one, for example, is not imaginary. It doesn't um, exist. So. <laughs> um so as I said, I, three of my customers I know have color, uh, are colorblind. I don't know if they have the same degree of colorblindness, but what I can say is I have tested this coral after the first person when I can't tell the difference between these, and I pointed it out to the other two people and they agreed. Now, I well, you're going to bring the corals up for people to see, I assume. These are two vastly different colored corals, and I was amazed when I when I found this out. I'm also just before I bring it up, I've just started a poll: Are you colorblind? And I'm going to test to see if if reef keepers are more likely to be colorblind than non reef keepers. Um, so, the, and this is going to be, I apologise in advance, this is going to be torture for colorblind people because apparently yeah. <laughs> you can't tell the difference the between those two corals. Because I, this is that, how and it... if you're colorblind, so Zach McTaggart, <laughs> McTaggart, uh, if you're colorblind, tell us if you, well, you are, tell us if uh, if you can see the difference between those. Be interesting to see if there are different types and what. Yeah. Stuff. See what the, how this came up. I said I was showing the, the coral to people, and I said, "Oh, how about this one?" And he went, "Well, isn't that the same as the last one you just showed me?" I'm like, <laughs> "No, they are so different. Okay. <laughs> like, unbelievably different as far as like, like to me. Like, you you couldn't really get two more opposite coloured corals." So, well, I mean, one of the, they they look. If you if if you turn that to black and white photo, they'd look yeah. identical because they've got I the did same it. Yeah, I patterns did it. and shapes and all that. but um <clears throat> and spots, but. <coughs> excuse me so one of those is blue and green and the other is i don't know pinky red and yellow oh i mean no one knows because with your colors it could be anything <laughs> so they're, they're they're quite they're quite different let's have a look then yeah okay zach mctaggart uh, is he says yeah the left is blue and green and the right is red and yellow oh. so zach so you, can see these you're an imposter color blinder yeah you're not like reef dog <laughs> shut up but that does show that it's different 
yeah. my god, I know a colorblind electrician. That would be terrible. <laughs> um, but just whilst we're here watching this, actually, 93% uh, of reef keepers are not colorblind out of a poll of 45. I'll come back to that. Um, why is one of those 20, 20 quid and one is 45? I'm not know. criticizing your pricing, but like, I mean, I just, I, it would have been I, it literally would have been what like i bought them for like, oh, okay. originally so because i think the, the one that's more expensive is nicer in my opinion yeah it is way but nicer. it's just like that is they are very similar corals no nah, actually that's probably that's fair enough no that is think okay <laughs> that is firstly fun. firstly like corals that have gold in them are usually more more expensive that's not um, gold secondly yeah no it, 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 it is gold <laughs> um when you when you see it properly okay um although i do try to get good pictures I know you like to moan at my pictures. <clears throat> um, and green corals are everywhere. So that's why there's such a big difference in costs. <laughs> huh. Let's put it this way. I sell a lot more of the, of the right one than I do of the left, of the left one. Yeah, I bet. Um, and Zach McTaggart follow-up says it's very specific. Like, I can't tell the difference between Superman Blastos and Blue Raven Blasto. Interesting. We have a colorblind teacher. Oh, please tell me it's an art teacher. It, that, that is, yeah. It says art teacher. Oh, does it say art? Oh, it does. It apparently you can't <laughs> read either. I know, yeah, I can't read or, or see colours. That's hilarious. Um, Normally the person who who came to the farm that originally discovered this is in the chat, and he obviously isn't at the moment because he normally comments. We're, we're last, to... last week he said, don't make fun of my disability. Disability, yeah. <laughs> And I'm not making fun of his... Look, he, I know him well, so yeah. he, he, he's not offended. Let's put it that way. 8% um, of reef keepers are currently colourblind, <laughs> according to the... How official... many people have voted? Uh, 52. It's interesting, but I, I suspect um, you're more likely to vote if you are colorblind on this particular poll. <clears throat> oh, oh, they're true, yeah, true. But so it's not, it's not very scientific. Um, Mitch McClintock is not colorblind, but he's really biased against green corals. If I wanted green, I'm having a planted tank, <laughs> it's very easy to get green corals. True, all corals are either green or red, basically. Not Facts. that one, that one, that one's like. Well, you won't know. I don't want to offend you, but God's sake. it right. was like purple and gold. Right. In that case, if you're going to be like that, if, <laughs> is, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about um, these corals? <clears throat> Not really. I just wanted to like segue into what we were talking about. I thought this would be a good way to do it. And I hadn't thought about the thought about a coral to pick. OK, well, in which case <laughs> we're now going to move on to the news, the news. <laughs> And I've stuffed it because I've done something wrong. I was, I, I was working on something. I'm just going to do that again. So we are now going to move on to the new. And I put my suit on for the news. because That's somehow, terrible. That is such a terrible joke. <laughs> professional news reader. So I anyway, got that on. Um, <laughs> you like you have no shoulders. <laughs> it's, it's, so this is, I got this as an extra large because yeah. I wanted to make it easy to put on. Yeah, and uh, and, th and there's a black t-shirt underneath it, so it just looks really weird. But okay, I make an effort for you guys. Got my yeah. shirt in mind. So uh, anyway, news, serious news reading, please. Fine. Um, I'm just going to end that poll. Six. You look more like a sports reader for some reason. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Six percent of uh, reef keepers are colorblind. Uh, all right. So <laughs> news. First piece of news. Yeah, have you are you familiar with the expression? It's a feature, not a bug. Uh, no. It's what uh, like software people say when I can, I can guess what it. I can exactly. kind of guess. It, yeah, something like something doesn't work properly, and uh, and they they're like, oh, it's not that it doesn't work properly. It's a feature. It's it's deliberate. To, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I found the fish equivalent of that, which is the Palmer <laughs> Labs stubby conspic. Yeah. And you had a um, you had a theory about this. So this is our first off. Explain what this. So this was this was old news because this, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is from two weeks ago, pre holiday. Um, but this was so Palmer Labs have uh, have uh, bred uh, this pair of what they're calling short bodied spectacled angelfish, conspic pair basically, conspic yeah, uh, conspiculatus. Uh, and they they're described as short body because they're these kind of stuffy little funny things. And th they look like they've got a disease. But you had a theory about this. Do you remember what you texted me? Uh, I kind of, did I say, we screwed up, let's just put stubby on it and then someone will and buy it or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Basically, this is like when you get 
Uh, yeah, this is just oh, hang on. The pair is oh, pair is being offered for two thousand eight hundred. Oh, cheap. So cheap. actually, to be fair, quite cheap to be. But they and look, taste is subjective. So there'll be people out there who who can't get enough of that. But that to me, they look awful. They look weird. They look unhealthy. That looks like a pug, like the pug equivalent of in a fish. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they look like as they're obviously small at the moment. They're probably like I reckon they're like this big. They look like tight. They look tiny. So will they get? Will they elongate as they get bigger? I don't know, but it's one of those things where it's good that companies are breeding fish and they need to maximize the amount of money they can make. Mm-hmm. And but that's the sort of fish that, in a proper breeding facility of like freshwater fish, where there's a, a loads of them, so they don't keep all of them, it would probably have been cold. If you see oh, what I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wonder if um, if they feed uh, fish like that to the other fish in tropical farms or if they just flush them don't know anyway um but yeah so if you've got three thousand dollars and no taste you can buy uh, a stubby uh, angel fish <laughs> so harsh <laughs> so harsh <laughs> those um, two fish are going to be unloved forever now <laughs> <laughs> uh next one this was a, this is a weird article and the headline is that researchers have found three hundred forty-eight thousand square kilometers uh, or an extra three hundred so fifty thousand more square feet of coral reefs, shallow coral reefs, less than thirty meters, using satellite technology. And the head and the, the the first line of the article says, researchers at the University of Queensland, where Derek lives, uh, have announced that they have identified an extra three hundred forty eight thousand square kilometers of shallow coral reefs in the oceans. How can you have we have not noticed? Over a quarter of a million square kilometers, which is about 348,000, is probably about a quarter of a million square miles. I don't know, roughly yeah. um, 62%. Uh, how can we not have noticed that? How can that be new? I don't know if I've misread that because it does say an extra 348,000. It's like someone was obviously dosing calc. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. grown since then. <laughs> has been put in calc in the ocean. Uh, but so I did wonder if that's just because it's if because they've used this technology to map it. So I wondered if they'd mapped it and they they'd found that. But it, it sounds like it was almost. I, it, they don't say it was newly discovered, but it's almost saying newly discovered um, uh, uh, coral reefs. And I thought that's weird. I, it might just be that it's, it's been. I'm misreading it, and that they're just saying that they've mapped this out. But. Uh, I don't know, it's weird. But anyway, I suppose that's good because more coral reefs. So that means that we can go and yeah, get James more. just answer your question. Ocean is big, people are small. The ocean is the ocean is big. Facts. All right. So that's the first fact of uh, the live stream. They probably uh, have a new satellite or something when they took a picture and they went, oh, look. And then they used AI <laughs> to, to work out where the reefs are. And then it went, oh, look, there you go. These are some new stuff for you. It was it was a satellite, so the other probably is it to be fair. But that just seems I know I know that ocean is big, right? <laughs> I, that's not news to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I, that was just surprising. But anyway, that's cool. More more coral reefs. That means more uh, corals for us in the hobby, right? Well, it, actually, if you think about it, potentially you could get entirely new corals in those space in those places. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't, why not? It's the same as like an uncharted jungle. In theory, you could find new frogs and stuff like that in, in, in those places. So why couldn't you find new corals in these? Think of all the new boring gobies that I have in there. Yeah, that's true. That is usually what happens. One inch brown gobies. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, but there you go. So more, more, more corals. Uh, next piece of news is, have you, have you, have you heard, have you heard of Marco Rock? Yes. This stuff. Yeah. This is purple Marco Rock. So yeah. this is coming to the UK. DD are bringing it over. Um, so this I've seen. I'm sure they, they talk about this in America quite a lot. I think they've got it over there, and it's really yeah. popular. It's coming to uh, the UK. I'm surprised because it like shipping must be really expensive, and uh, they did have pricing. It said uh, so. The price Reef Saver starts at 170 pounds for the 18 kilo blocks. 10 pounds a kilo. Mm, that's not bad actually. And then foundation and hybrid are 229 for 18 kilos. And the premium shelf is 300 for 18 kilos. Okay, so the premium stuff is expensive. Yeah. Really expensive, actually. Um, maybe it's really nice. I don't know. But uh, 170 quid for 18 kilos, that's actually not bad. Uh, I don't know how much. Uh, it's been a while since I've bought um, a real reef rock, which is what I've used on my last tank. But I, I can tell you how much it costs. But Yeah. 
but yeah, there you go. So another rock option. There's so many more options these days than there were like seven, eight years ago. Yeah, but they're all more expensive. <laughs> as in, <laughs> as in, everything's more expensive. Everything <laughs> is more expensive. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I hate the price of stuff at the moment. But anyway, the hobby is actually, I believe this is true, is expected to grow. Signet like. I suppose there's probably lots of things that are growing. I believe it is expected to grow worldwide. I don't know about the UK um, community of reef keepers, but it's expected to. I think, obviously, the easier it becomes. Think about it this way. If you have a choice and it becomes just as easy as it's not going to, but just as easy as fresh water, you're <laughs> always going to choose a clownfish over a guppy. Everyone is going to choose a clownfish over a guppy. Yeah. So the easier it becomes, the more information, the more products, the more accessible it is for people. The only thing, obviously, there is a cost atta attached to this. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why it's expanding. Because I think fish keeping is the third largest um, pet in the UK. Yeah. That, that obviously includes ponds and freshwater and everything. But again, you, if you're going to ha have fish, most people would choose a clownfish over anything else. As far as I'm concerned, mm. or or a saltwater fish, if you see what I mean. If it was, it. if it was as easy, <laughs> yeah. If it was the it same, is. equally as easy, yes. Um, and I think I think the myth of it being impossible is is slowly fading. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that the 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 one thing is that it'll never be uh, as popular as freshwater, partly because um, it, it's. It, uh, it, even if it's even if it, you could argue some people would argue that it's it's not really much more difficult if you if you want it to be easy but the one thing that uh that you will find with is that you can a freshwater tank can take a lot more neglect than a saltwater tank and what i mean and there are most people who or not most people to be fair but lots of people who buy a fish tank whether it's <clears throat> excuse me fresh or salt water aren't really interested in it they're just like oh that looks cool that would look good in my kitchen and they set up a tank, and like I've seen so many times, freshwater tanks that um uh, they they've got a goldfish in or whatever or whatever fish in there, and half of the water is evaporated away. Yeah, they just they can't be bothered to top it up, and they probably put food in every now and that's that's literally all they do. Yeah, if you do that with a freshwater tank, that fish is not going to be as happy as it would be if you were looking after it properly. Yeah, but it's it's not as likely to die. If you do that with a saltwater tank, it's dead in a week. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So. Um, and that will, and so the, the casual fish keeper that's not really interested in it as a hobby, they just want something because it's like a fish would be cool, will always gravitate towards freshwater, I would say. Um, but yeah. Uh, they, they just because just, I think people in the comments as well <laughs> think that I'm saying that freshwater will be less popular than saltwater. Now, what I'm trying to say is that it is it's growing. If you see what yeah, I mean, as in, yeah. as it becomes more accessible to be more easier to do, is the the industry is growing. Uh, and uh, Caroline, this uh, Marco rock is uh, apparently is uh, mined Florida bedrock, given it's an old seabed. Yeah. And I think I saw a video. I can't remember which channel it was. Maybe Worldwide Corals, not that long ago, where they had these massive slabs. I think it was Marco rock. These massive slabs of of, of rock that they. Uh, they dig out and then like chisel away into nice shapes and stuff. So I think that might have been it. Um, but there we go. Uh, and the final piece of news is Reefstock Denver is uh, coming. When is it? Second and third of March. Denver. Are you going to Denver, Ryan? Uh, I will not be going to Denver. Um, Colorado, isn't it? Uh, is that uh, oh, it's a beautiful state? I think, from the sounds of it, from the looks of it, um, is that is that one of the places that you would you would go? Do you know what I'm going? Maybe no. or is that like not really that? <laughs> no. Usually, if I go to a sh uh, to one of the shows, it's usually like one of the biggest shows, which would either be Magna Reef of Palooza or Aqua Shell. I've not been to, but I would go to. Um, and it has to be in a location I want. So I've never, I'd never want to go to like I don't know. There's a Reef of Palooza in California, I think, and I've just never been interested when the other options are New York, Florida. <laughs> if you see what mm. I mean, I'd rather go there. I'd rather um, go to California. I really want to go to Yosemite. That's, that's I don't like, know I'm enough about country. California to know, like, to <clears throat> keep my interest, if you see what I mean. And the reason that, obviously, um, Macra in Vegas was, like, it was just unreal. It was unreal. And I think that I really, really think they need to bring that back. They need to bring it back there because it will re it will get people there. I, if Macra was in Vegas again, would you go? Uh, I don't have uh, an overwhelming urge to go to Vegas, to be honest. Yes, but I'll be there. 
and you have an overwhelming urge to spend time with me. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Um, I it mean, was just, <laughs> it was so much fun because it's yeah. like a part. Everyone was in this mood, even if they. So I didn't. I didn't do any gambling, but everyone was in this like party mood because you're in Vegas. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, okay. all the other you like the other YouTubers were there, and it was just. It was just. It was that was the best show I ever went to. I would love to go to, I have to say, I'd love to go to a show where there were a load of YouTubers. Um, uh, it would be cool to meet up with everybody. Yeah. I've chatted to a few people, obviously, um, uh, on the, the stream and like uh, messages and all that sort of stuff, but I'd love to meet everyone properly. That'd be cool. <clears throat> that was what I genuinely, that was one of the best days of my life. It sounds so sad. <laughs> it was funny because someone, someone said to me, um, th they tapped on my shoulder and they went, inappropriate reef is looking for you. And I'm like, he knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so the funny thing was i was also looking for him so oh, right. we were like we were rotating around this show looking for <laughs> each other <laughs> okay um but yeah yeah it was it was it was genuinely really nice to meet like all like i met reef dudes and obviously aaron's aquarium at the time and um loads of people i can't remember some of the names of them but yeah it was good i've seen the photo and i can't remember it but yeah i, I remember seeing the photo oh, I'd, I'd love that i mean it'd be really mile, cool. mile high reefer yeah I yeah think. um yeah, he's uh can't remember his name, but yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, him. yeah. Yeah, I met him. Scott. Is his name Scott? Yeah, I, th I think it's Scott. Yeah. Yeah, Scott Anderson. Yes, that's how he that's how he starts each of the videos, isn't it? Where he says, I'm Scott Anderson. I don't I don't I so I don't subscribe to him. I don't I don't think he's made a video for a while. Uh I think he stopped making them for a for a while and he made one a few months ago, I think. Oh did he? Yes, yeah, Scott Anderson. Oh no, a month ago. He's back. Yeah. Maybe he was never away. <laughs> I'll check that out later. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, so if it's at Vegas, I'll go. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get approval from Mrs. RD. But um, well, just I need to interrupt quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I can't think. I have to ask you something because you put it's annoying the UK doesn't have many huge coral fish events. So what am I about to ask? Can you do you know what I'm about to ask, Alex? I do. Did you <laughs> did you book tickets to Aqua? That's, That's why I want to know. <laughs> I hope we just be oh, yeah. silent now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You booked your tickets. Yeah, yeah. I booked mine, and you obviously. So, why the reason I'm saying this is, if you want to have huge events, you have to support the people that are trying to put them on. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you look. You might have already booked the tickets, so then if you did, great. But if if you feel the same way as I can't think, then that's what you need to do. Go support the one that is on. Yeah, you meant completely. to say yes. Yes, yes, Ryan. I yes. agree. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I'm waiting for I can't think to come back, but I'm, there's nothing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, we, I've not seen much on um, Aqua actually. I was, I was, no. uh, I, I, I've not been looking. But um, oh, no, it's all coming here out. We <laughs> here we go. How could you forget? You're here every week, and we spoke about it consecutively week after week for ages. So what I want uh, next week from uh, uh, from you people at home is yeah. I want Rich's Reef. I want your child to have identified a coral, please. Thank you very yeah. much. And I want I can't think to have his ticket okay that's your homework it's in september now plenty of time yeah um it seems to keep moving around no it's september I'm not moving uh cool uh john wright has got his ticket I spoke to the organizer yesterday oh what did there he tell you me? Go. uh we're gonna wrap it up now so we're, we're not gonna that's have right. time, time to hear but anyway um all right that was the news <laughs> Didn't think I'm going to take that off <laughs> properly. That, that is a one-time gag, I think. I don't think we'd that, that gag cost me. <laughs> yeah, well, well worth it. Money well spent. Let's put that in the bin. Lovely stuff. Uh, I was going to get you one as well. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be as I'd be like you. I couldn't put it on in the in the 10 second jingle. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I actually practiced that. <laughs> oh, you're so sad sometimes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, all right. Well, in which case, thank you all for joining, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Good to be back again. Uh, we will be back again next week with some more nonsense, probably on uh, more upgrade talk. Uh, uh, Ryan, anything else you'd like to say? Any deals? What was your discount code going out tonight? Hundred percent off. Uh, I will. I will do twenty percent off tonight. Oh, really? There you go. Look, look, just specifically, just because you asked. It will be so. I've got need to do it now quickly. It will be discount in capitals twenty. So there you go. So who's working for you, babe? Yeah. See. Discount, discount twenty. There you go. I put the um the code in the chat. There you go. 
So cool. go shopping and you won't get a code any time anytime soon. I wasn't planning to do one, but Alex obviously asked. So I'm like, yeah, go on <laughs> awesome. then. happy days. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Catch you next Okay. Week. Thanks. See you later. Bye.